If you're looking for Halloween inspiration, I got you covered. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to make a skeleton swag. Using some Dollar Tree Christmas trees, some ribbon, some deco mesh, some deco tubing, a yard pick, some ornaments, some of these floral picks. And that's just to start with. You know I'm always adding stuff. So we're going to start by taking the trees out of the box, taking the bases off. We're going to turn them around so their ends are facing and using two zip ties we're going to attach these together. If you don't have zip ties you can use floral wire, you can use jute, whatever you want to use. Just get them really tight. Clip off the excess because we're not going to need those showing. And then you're going to start pulling these out. I would normally call this fluffing them up, but since they're going to be flat on one side and you're just going to be pulling everything out to the sides, you can call this whatever you want it. We are arranging it then. So now it actually looks like a 2D Christmas tree. That's kind of how it's going to look. You're going to pull those out to the side. You can reach underneath and pull those out to the side. Sometimes two of them will be very close together, so just be sure you separate them. They're kind of um, thin. You know the little branches are thin, so just be sure that you pull each little segment apart. And on the end it does have a longer piece. Do that on both sides. We're going to go over to the yard sign now and just press down and pull the stand off. Alright, I'm going to layer up some deco mesh. I have some that I thrifted, so I don't know how much it is. And then some from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut these in 9 inch pieces. So we're going to need 24 9 inch pieces of the stripes and we're going to need 12 9 inch pieces of the black. Now we're going to roll these. They're just going to make little, look like little burritos. We're just going to roll them. Just going to roll them right over. Little curls just like this. And we're going to stack those together. A black and then two of the colored ones. Just like that. You can use your little clips and hold them together as you assemble your bundles. So you will have 12 bundles. Continue along. You can see if you don't want to hold it or if you're at the beginning of your roll, it won't be as tightly wound. But when you get closer to that little paper segment in the middle, then um, the rolls will be tighter. There you go. So after we've got all of those assembled, we can take them off the clip and start putting them down on the base. I'm going to start on the end and just push it down in there, wrap this around, and then there we have the first piece down. I'm going to go to the opposite end and do the same thing. Now you can lay your pieces down any way you want. But going from end to end, I'm making sure that I keep my patterns the same because that's how my mind works. But if you want to start at one end and go all the way down, you can certainly do that. I just want to be sure that I have enough for both ends and that they're evenly spaced. And so doing it this way is helpful to me in my mind and making sure that everything is where it should be. While we are putting this together, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. It seems like lots and lots of people are interested in the Halloween decor, and I am very grateful for that because my heart is in fall and winter crafting, and I think that, um, I think it shows. Um, I just really have a lot of passion for that, and so I like to do it, and I'm glad that you like to see it being done so that I can share with you all the things that I like and then you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do that you see me do and change things up like I say make it my own that's what you want to do you want to make it your own and um, you don't have to go overboard you really don't and some things sometimes I think people get kind of backwards with how they think about things they think oh it's too hard there's no way I can do it it's not hard. Some things just take a little more time to do. You know, it's not a fast thing here. It takes a little more time to do it. But you'll get it. You can do it. So now let's go back to that sign. We're going to use a pipe cleaner on the back. 
or chenille stem, whichever way you prefer to call it. I'm gonna add some hot glue and just roll it around in there and then using a little piece of cardboard scrap, I just put it over there to help kind of secure it in place so we don't pull it off while we're attaching it. I'm gonna put it on the front side and then pull those pipe cleaners through and wrap it around the base. Or that kind of that middle section, the um, branchy part, the wired part of that tree. You flip it back over and it looks nice. Now when you're doing that, if you tighten it too tight, it's gonna sink down and press your the sign down into it. You don't want that. You want it to look like it's floating above there, right? That gives a better look. And so now we're gonna add those picks. That's so easy to do. You're just gonna slide them in that little space where it's attached in the back, just slide those branches right in there. If you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, just go get a stick out of the yard and spray paint it. Easy enough, right? A little black spray paint, perfect. Okay, so for this tubing, I think I called it deco tubing, but I'm not really sure what it is. You're just going to take this and overlap it over and over and over again. And I think I end up with like five loops on each side. You can see it's really easy, not a big deal. Kind of fluffing it out to see what I've got. I think it is five. And then when I get enough on both sides, I'm gonna make it kind of, you know, thick and bunchy and I'm gonna trim it off. Then I'm going to take another little section to just secure it, you know, tied around the middle so that everything stays together. Really easy to do. I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely find this type of thing at Dollar Tree. It might not be black and white, but you can definitely find it there. It doesn't really matter what color it is, right? Because you're going to do your own thing. You don't have to copy exactly what I have, right? And I love this. That is a cute little bow, right? All right, so now I'm just going to take a floral pick, a little extra stick that I had. It might have been one, one of those little pumpkins we're on because it's wood. Yeah, that might be what it came from. And I'm just going to push it through the back of that knot, which is really tight. So it's secure there, but you can add a little cool temp glue there if you wanted to, or some super glue to hold it in place. You don't want anything melting. And then I'm just going to feed it down behind, and it's going to stick right down in that frame. Then I'm going to add some hot glue to the back. In the same situation as before, take a little scrap paper or cardboard and put over the top of the glue spots. That way you can secure it and continue on with your project rather than waiting for that to dry. Okay, you can fluff out your little curls a little bit and then start adding down whatever type of ornaments you want. You can use table scatter here. You can use the little miniature pumpkins here if you want to. You can use any color in any size that you like. And these little mini ornaments are perfect. To me, in my opinion, they're perfect for this. I'm just going to add these here and there in the little rolls and also in the branch to give a little more interest. Like decorating a Christmas tree. You just put them here and there, whatever you like them. Now I want to make him a bow tie because he looks regal to me with that top hat. So we're going to make a bow tie. I'm just going to use some of this darker orange ribbon. This actually came from the fall section in Dollar Tree. I'm going to bunch it in the middle. Real easy. You can see how I do that. And then while I'm making the centerpiece, I'm just going to clip it together. I'm going to roll this over and flatten it. This is going to go over the center of the bow. So you're just going to place it on the front, flip it over. You got to kind of manipulate it just a bit to make sure you get the placement right. And then adding a little bit of glue. Protect your fingers. Protect your fingers. Press this down and then clamp it in place so that it can dry. Now what I'm doing now is I added some hot glue in the hole up there and I'm just covering it with some black, um, with a black marker. So it kind of fades into the back and you don't see the hole so much. Now to put his bow tie on, I'm gonna use a craft stick glue it on and then we're just going to glue it right to the back of the sign. Perfect. It almost looks like it's floating there now. So I mixed up a little dark orange paint to go over this glitter because I noticed that the glitter was kind of um, sparse in some areas and it just gave it kind of a cheap look and I want to give it a little bit of a more of a high-end look, you know. So I'm just going to go over it with that paint and 
make it look solid and the same color and I think it looks great. It's almost exactly the same color as his bow tie. Then we're going to go around here with a little bit of this trim just around the hat band. Look at that pop. Next project is a jack-o-lantern round. Taking another one of those vintage looking yard signs from Dollar Tree. I've got the little pumpkin guy here and I'm going to use a wood round that I th thrifted. Somebody else had done something on there. I'm going to pop the back off just like that. I'm going to use a little tape on the back and then fill in the hole. This is the same process that I used on the skeleton. I sanded this down so now it is actually round. It was kind of um, cut kind of rough but now it's nice and round, nice and smooth on the front. I'm going to take my painter's tape and I got mine from Dollar Tree. I have had no problem with my painter's tra tape from Dollar Tree so I do recommend it. And I'm just going to mark a line off. I'm not measuring down. I'm only going to be measuring our center section. So we're going to have about five inches in the middle. This is just my preference. Again, you can do anything you want. You don't even have to have three stripes. You could just do two or you could just do, you know, whatever you want to do. You could paint this one solid color if you wanted. So now I'm just trying to choose which orange is the best fit for this pumpkin. And we'll be using a creamy white and we're going to use Mod Podge and black. Using a little bit of Mod Podge, I'm going to go over that inside marked area right along the edge across the tape and be sure that we don't have any bleeding of our paint you know into the other section. I want it to be nice and crisp. So now I'm just mixing my paint and I used a little bit of Harvest Orange and some brown together and this is close enough to me. So I'm going to take that color after my Mod Podge is dry and I'm going to go over that entire middle section. Now this paint, for whatever reason, was a little bit thinner than the black and the cream color that I used. So I had to use three coats of paint on this. Totally fine with that. I love painting. Uh, not a problem for me. You can use a blow dryer or a heating tool of some type to dry in between your layers if you are, you know, concerned about timing. So I always like to give you those little tips in there that will help you out. No excuses. We sit down to craft, we craft. Okay, so this is how it looks. And while my paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and take this paint tape off. So I want to show you what I discovered. I'm so excited about this. The little nail file from Dollar Tree that I've been using to sand with easily takes off marks that are on the wood. These didn't even come off when I was using my big sander, but it easily erased the little black marks that were had remained on there, which is great because you can do the same thing. You don't have to throw it out, you can still use it. Isn't that perfect? Be sure when you are sanding though that you wipe down your surfaces and get all that dust off because you will have dust as you can see on that paper towel. You will have that left and you don't want to muddy up your tape, your paint rather. So once everything is dry here on that middle section, I'm going to take my painter's tape and carefully go down and make sure that I am over my edge so everything's nice and crisp and I'm just going to lightly press it down and then rub it down in place once I get it exactly where it needs to be. Same process, I'm going to use the Mod Podge and go over that edge just to make sure that it is sealed and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Seal it up. I love Mod Podge. All right, using Jet Black, we're going to add some down on my board, and I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on there. If you get too much, it's not a problem. You just scoop it off, open the top, and just scrape it back into the bottle. I do it all the time. Just going to go along here, making nice, smooth swipes with your paintbrush. Now, one thing I might like to add here at this point is... If you don't use a roller, and I know a lot of people use a little roller for this, if you don't have a roller, you can achieve a nice smooth look if you make sure that your final swipes across your paint are nice, long, even swipes. That's going to make it nice and um, thick, and you don't have a bunch of brush marks in it. 
So this is like a, I think this is like an antique white. So it's just a little bit of a cream color and it is a absolutely beautiful color. I think that this suits the sort of the vintage look. Look at that y'all, only one coat of the white and one coat of that black. And then once it dried, we peeled off the tape and I used my, um, no, it wasn't quite dry. I peeled the tape off. Then I dried it with my little heat tool. That's what I did. And look how great those colors look together. Love it. You could also do candy corn colors if you wanted. So I'm going to go around the little welcome part of that sign and I'm just going to use a black acrylic marker to go around the edges. And I do the same thing on the little pumpkin guy so you don't see any of that little um, particle board or MDF or whatever that is. And this is going to give it an, a very nice, more expensive look. I'm just using my little clamps down there as a space uh, holder so that I know exactly where to put this back down. But you can measure if you want to um, and mark on it and then erase the marks. Whichever way you like to do it is absolutely fine. More than one way to skin a cat, right? Definitely. Okay, that's an old saying, y'all. I'm not trying to offend anybody by saying that. I love cats and I would never do that. Then we're going to put the little welcome sign down same way. And I'm just using my little... Um, insulators down there just to hold it because they're heavy and it helps hold things in place. Sometimes these little signs kind of bend and uh, I'm just making sure that they don't bend away and cause a gap where my glue is. So I'm cutting 12 inch pieces of ribbon here and I'm um, using an orange, black, polka dot, some smaller polka dot, and then another small polka dot. I like this. This just looks like it looks festive and you know I just like it. But you use whatever you like. If you've got something with pumpkins on it, certainly use that. I'm trying to use what I've got, though. So we're making a little sort of a messy bow here, and we're just going to layer it and go over and over. Just making X's. Make an X with each color. And then I'll start off by putting these down. Now, I wanted these to be a little bit shorter because they don't have wire in them, and they'll kind of flop. So I made those two inches shorter than the long ones. And then I remembered I had this mesh ribbon a little bit left. So I took this mesh and added that on and then I put my smaller pieces back on top. It just gives it a little something extra and I really like it. It's a little more interest I think. So just taking a thin piece of black ribbon, I'm going to lay it on the table, flip over my bow, and then I'm going to tie it in a few knots to hold it in place. You can definitely use um, something else to tie your bow. You can use a zip tie here. You can use a Chanel stem. You can use floral wire. You can use a bread tie. If you're just down to it and you don't have anything else to use, you certainly can use a bread tie. It's wire, isn't it? It would work. So my bow is, my uh, ribbon back there is tied in a very tight knot and I'm just going to fluff a little bit, trim it off, and then we're going to add it to the top. You can do the top, you can do the side, whatever you like, but I put it right in the center top because I want to add one extra thing. I'm going to use my little clamp here to hold it till it dries as I fluff a little bit on my bow. And I'm just bending out the ones that have wire. And this helps give the bow a little more body, a little more dimension. It kind of lifts it up from the surface and it's just a pretty look, I think. So now we're going to lace some beads. I just use a little bit of hot glue on my jute, twist it, got a nice little point on there, and then we'll be able to add some beads on. Now I have some orange and black and they match pretty well to this, I think. Pretty good. I'm going to add those onto the string just like so, and then I will go down the rope just a little bit and tie a knot because this is going to be our hanger for the back. Trim it off what you don't need. And then we're going to add this to the back. It's a good fit. A little bit of ribbon over that glue is going to hold that in place and it will look nice. You can trim it off if you want, but if you want to use it in another project, just leave it and you can pull it off later. And this is how this beautiful wood round turned out. I love him and I cannot wait to hang this up. So cute. Now we're going to do some beware boots. I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree signs to come in a two pack. I just need one. Got some chalkboard paint. 
some wooden blocks and bits, a Christmas sign from Dollar Tree, and some thrifted boots. I cut this off of a Santa Claus thing. It was like a Santa Claus hanger, and I knew I needed those boots so that I could use them for a witch. I'm going to just cover this in the paint, and I'm going to do the front, the back, the ends, you just cover the whole thing. There was a piece of rope there that you just saw me cover. Um, so I'm covering that up to try to make that disappear. I had to cut it off really, really close to that. It was just like glued in there and there was no way to just pull it out. So I had to work with it. As my boots are drying, I am going to plug the little hole in the back. We all know how to do this. Same thing as I've done before. Now you know exactly what to do. I'm going to use the remaining paint that's on that little sponge brush to go around my edges. And now I get to decorate the boots. Now all I did for this was pull up a picture on Google of witch's boots. And I saw this pretty pattern. So I'm not going to claim this pattern. I did not create it. I'm going to give the creator credit. However, there was no name, so I don't know who created it. But I didn't do it. I just used it as inspiration. Okay? So now I'm just looking at it on my iPad and I am tracing it here on my boots. These are like a Victorian witch's boot. There's so many options and so many different ways. If you don't like this, you could use something of your own design. You could use something completely different or you could just leave them black or maybe paint something else on them or put some beads on them or put some lace on them, whatever you want to do. So now this is kind of like an eyelet um, pattern that I'm doing around here. This is how it was in the picture and I'm just using that same pattern going around. I'm going to do the same thing on the other boot. And now I'm going to start putting the little lines in here where the buttons would be attached. And believe it or not, just by eyeballing this, when I did both boots, I had exactly the same amount of lines. I did not mess it up or have to erase it. It was a miracle. I think there's 13 of them. Okay, so now I am going to be using a gold paint pen and I am just going to go over the lines where I penciled it in. And then once everything's dry, you can go back and erase it, but I didn't even bother doing that. It was totally fine. Use whatever type of a paint pen you have. This one works really well. And I had two options, so I tried them on the back of the block to see which one was the best coverage, and this is the one that I preferred. My other gold pen had a kind of a green tint to it. It just really wasn't very bright or pretty. And we want her to be beautiful, right? So now she has nice, beautiful, you know what I think about witches and how they need to be beautiful. That's right. So look how cute this is so far. Do the same thing on both boots and now we're going to draw on the buttons and all I'm doing is making little circles here to make the buttons. And I'm trying to keep my lines even so it actually looks like they are lined up like they would be on a Victorian boot. Look at that. Yes. Yes, girl. Okay, so now we're going to get, I'm going to have a little bit of dry brushing on this sign because I want to bring that gold in. You know, you want everything to look cohesive and well blending and intentional so I'm just using a very tiny bit here and then I go back over it a few more times till I get the coverage I like. This beware sign you can get in a three pack at Dollar Tree and I couldn't find the rest of them I don't know what I did with them so I'm repurposing this that was on a different project from a few years ago. I'm going to dry brush over some gold over that orange let it dry and then I'm going to go back over it with brown. And this is just plain old brown. There's no specific name to it. Just brown. And I'll add that until I get the coverage I like. And I love that look. Beautiful. I colored my blocks black. And we're just going to add those to the back of the boot. So it has a better base to hold down and to its, um, that sign that's going to be on the bottom. It's going to be our main base. And then a little block here because we don't want that showing through. We want it to look like it's floating there, right? And it stands up and it's wonderful. Look at that. Perfection. So now that I've got my placement, I know where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and add my hot glue and put those down on the sign. 
I'm lining the block up all the way with the edge so the toes of the boots are actually kind of extended over the edge of the sign. That's just my preference, but you can do it however you want. And you can get little witch's boots and stuff from Dollar Tree. They will look exactly the same as mine, but you get the idea. Get the inspiration and then do it your way, right? Make it your own. I'm gonna add some hot glue on here and right on the tips because I know it'll overlap on the boots and help make it secure. Then I'll just sit it down and hold it in place for a moment. So far, so good. Now we got Beware the Witches in. I like that. I'm going to add some glue under it and then we're going to add a little glue on the top. You can use little pieces of paper to go on top of that like I did just to give it a little more security because metal likes to pop off. And then go ahead and paint that black so everything will blend in. And I'm going to take some of these rings that I have used in a thousand crafts this, this fall. Love them. And I'm just going to cut the ring part off and I'm going to add these little jeweled spiders here and there. I'm going to put one up there near the witch. It's going to look like there are little spiders crawling around, right? I'll put one under this boot and then one over here crawling up the boot. Love it. I love it. What a cute sign and it'll fit perfectly in a narrow space maybe in front of a TV or on a shelf. Here are three projects that we did that are vintage and I do believe that you can do these projects. Are they hard? Absolutely not. Maybe a little more time consuming than a five minute craft, but if you're willing to put the time in, I promise you, you can come up with something just like this. Or close enough, you know what I mean. Do it your way, certainly. And I added a little spider up there on the skeleton's hat too. Just a little black spider. Just like that. Here's the witch's boots. I would love it if you're new here, if you would subscribe. We have a lot of fun on this channel. And I'm always doing my best to bring you budget-friendly DIYs that are unique. Okay, the first project is a candy corn wreath that I think you're going to love. All right, so we're just gonna use a wreath form from the Dollar Tree. I think this is the 14 inch. I'm going to use a roll of burlap, but you can definitely use deco mesh. I have some burlap ribbon, and then I have some thrifted ribbon here. It's like a satin with a black trim. Of course, my candy corn picks, we're gonna use the smaller ones there. And I'm gonna use some pipe cleaners to hold these down on the wreath form. So we're gonna start off by taking these um, pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. Mine happen to be sort of a spiral type whatever, but I got them at the thrift store. I just pick these up whenever I see them because I use a lot of them when I'm making wreaths and swags. So we're gonna start by going across these center joints. We're just gonna cross them over. You can see what I did there. And we're gonna go all the way around just working on that outside, sort of the third ring if you are counting from the inside outward. If you cross them over in the middle, that will keep them from sliding around. So now I am going to put two more in between each one of the ones that we already did. Kind of space them sort of evenly. If you need to, you can take your glue gun and put a dot of glue there to keep it from sliding around on that ring. Whatever is going to make it easier for you is gonna be just fine. But you can see they kind of slide even when you twist them on tight. So just grab your glue gun. Protect your fingers here, y'all. Especially if you're not used to using a glue gun. That glue gets super hot. We're gonna continue around the wreath doing the same thing in every section. So two in between each one of the original ones we did. 
very easy. You can see what I'm doing. And I just like to push them to the outside because it makes it a little bit easier, um, gets them out of the way so I can continue to work. And we like easy things, don't we? We like little tips. By the way, thank you all for giving little tips in the comment section. I appreciate that. Um, for everybody who's leaving tips, there may be a little giveaway for you guys. Yeah, there may be. So stay tuned and keep sharing those wonderful tips. I appreciate it. I'm going to be cutting these into little 10 inch sections. I'm going to fold it over two times, about three quarters of an inch, maybe half an inch would be good enough. I'm going to walk my fingers up, flip it around, do the same thing on the other side, and now we have this cute little bow tie. Looks like a little bow tie, doesn't it? And then we're going to take a clip to hold it together, making sure our ends are folded under, and that's going to keep the little ravel pieces on the inside. Same thing here, I'm going to fold it twice, walk my little fingers up, twist it around, fold that over, pinch it to the center, and then put our clip on. And you're going to continue this process until you have 18 of these cute little bows. Now we're going to start applying them to the wreath. So you just pull the clip off the back, make sure that the folded side is downward, put it in the middle of whichever area you want to start with, and then give it a few tight twists to hold it in place. Here we go again on the next one. Put it right above it and twist it. I like to use a clockwise kind of direction in this type of a wreath. So you're gonna lay the next one down and you're going to give it a few twists and then get your little twist out of the way. Continue around the next one and don't worry about what's on top of what and what's getting in the way because when you fluff it later, everything is going to look so much better. It's always kind of rough in the beginning. So we're back around to the end and this is the last one we're putting on. Same process, press it down in the middle Hold it tightly a couple of twists and now it's all together. So now you can rotate, turn the little bows, turn them inward and outward, arrange them so that they look nice together, that they fit nicely together, flip them over if they've kind of gotten out of shape. And so you can tuck and move these little pieces of the bow around until they're all in a nice pretty shape. And you can see what I'm just pulling outward and downward, outward and downward. So kind of up on the left and down on the right. And that's gonna give you this beautiful shape that you end up with. And I'm just getting all of my little twist ties out of the way at this point. And this is how it's going to look. Now we're gonna work on the ribbon. So I'm just gonna do 10 inches of each of these. This one does not have any wire in it. The white one does have wire in it. So it's good either way. And then this beautiful ribbon also is wired. I love how it's got the black trim on it. Very nice. So I'm just gonna continue along. There'll be 18 pieces of orange of this orange, there'll be 18 pieces of the other orange, and then 18 pieces of this beautiful white or cream color. So I'm going to dovetail the ends of each one of these. I like the look of a dovetail with these ribbon stacks. I think it just, um, it just gives a lot of interest. I think it's pretty, and I can't imagine doing it any other way. So here we go, and let's start stacking. So now you pretty much want to have ensure that you have the ribbons that have some structure which would be the ones that have wire put those on the bottom and put your floppy ribbon on top because the wire from underneath will help give a little bit of body and hold up the floppier ribbon that's on top always works for me and i'm never disappointed when i do it that way okay so we're going to take the little stack and put it right down in the middle if it's easier for you, you can assemble all of your little stacks, use clips just like we did before, and hold them together, or you can do one at a time, which is what I generally do. Because they're easy and quick. Crossing it over, the wired ones on the bottom, and then the floppy one on the top. Plus, we have orange, white, and orange. And I like that pattern. 
It's just a little bit of black in there. It gives it a little bit of detail. So holding on to the middle, gave it a slight little fluff just to make sure the ribbons aren't flipped in the wrong direction. And then tightly cinch it down and then move the wire out of the way. You can do a bit of a fluff here, but it's gonna get all kind of bunched up. And you can see here I'm back to the beginning. So I'm at the, well, I'm at the very end. I've met up to the beginning again. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of mushy and out of order. So we're going to fluff, but we're going to tuck back these pieces of Chanel stem or pipe cleaner, whichever you prefer to call it. You can use wire cutters and just trim these off if you want or to give it a little more security if you're going to be putting it outside where it might be in the wind. You can twist it back around onto the wire underneath the bow. You don't want to do it too tightly because you don't want your bows to sink in. You still want them to look like they're floating on top or the uh, ribbon stacks rather. You don't want them to be cinched down too tightly but you can just twist them around. Now you can see there that you can see my hand through it. Once you fluff this out you won't be able to see the gaps anymore. So now we're going to work on the, the candy corn part. And I tried a lot of different patterns here, but I preferred to do it with the um, triple pick or the little trio pick here. They're the smaller ones. These are on a very nice wire, so you can bend them exactly how you like them. I'm going to bend mine this way, and in just a second you'll see exactly how I'm doing it so that it will give it a little body and stand up out of the wreath instead of laying flat. I'm putting some hot glue right on top of where the, pop, the pipe cleaners are twisted. We're going to skip one and go to the next one. So every other little bunch of ribbons is going to get adorned with the candy corn. So you can see what I'm doing here going to add a little bit of glue. I've twisted my candy corn so that the pick has like a little seat. It's a little crook in it. And then you bend the candy corn upward. So here it is again. Now you can see how it's bent and the bottom. I'm going to bend it down just a little, almost like it's sitting on top. I have found that these do not come off this way. This was a, um, and I did a lot of fluffing as you'll see later, and they did not come off. So I'm all the way back to the beginning doing every other one. And this is how it is going to look so far. Now this is without being fluffed up and beautified yet. So she's had her hair cut, but we haven't styled it. We're gonna do that very easily. You're just going to pull out your ribbons. You're going to overlap where you need to. If you don't want your wires to be seen on your candy corn, which I don't mind, but if you don't want them to show, then you're just going to take one of your ribbons and pull it over on the top, and it will cover it up. So you can kind of use the ribbons with the wire, and you can place those pretty much where you want to because the wire will hold them in their place. Continue all the way around and fluff. Then you can add a middle piece if you would like. So I'm just giving you some options here. But you'll see in the end that I chose to leave mine without any sign with it. And I think it looks nice just like this. Do you like this candy corn wreath? I am absolutely loving this candy corn wreath. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is a candy corn floral cup. Little arrangement. I'm going to take this cup that I got from Marshall's last year. Might have been the year before last. Love it, but that's way too much coffee for my jittery nerves. So I'm going to use it in a little arrangement. It is five inches, just showing you how big it is. These are some cupcake picks that came from Dollar Tree. Some candy corn, of course. A little scrap of this, whatever you call it, creepy cloth. And then a one pack that has four pieces of this floral foam. I'm going to use some sunflowers and then I don't know what these are. I got them thrifted and then here are some leaves that will coordinate in color. You can use glue to glue this down if you would like to or you could use a cool temperature hot glue gun if you would like. But if you pack it in here tightly enough, you don't have to use any glue at all and you still have a clean cup to use for other things or to have soup this winter or whatever you would like. 
So, love this foam. It is super easy to cut. It is actually designed for wet, live arrangements, but they're very good for crafting too. They're just, they can be quite messy, as all foams can be, but you can really kind of um, Tetris these in, if y'all remember the Tetris games. You can put these in here and just pack them in to pretty much form the shape that you need to lock it in place. So that's what I'm doing, kind of playing around with how much I need and where I need to put the pieces. A couple more pieces is probably gonna do it. So I actually only needed three blocks out of this pack of four. So I have an extra block to use for something else. And who doesn't love that? We get another project and didn't have to pay more for it. Now it is locked in, not falling out. How about that? So I'm gonna take my little creepy cloth here and put it on the top. You can use Spanish moss. It, uh, I didn't have any on hand. I had to pull it out of the tree and it was all wet because it has been raining like we live in the jungle here in South Alabama. So I just used my creepy cloth to go around here. You could use anything you want. This is just pretty much to cover up the foam. I don't wanna see it. So there we go. I've tucked some in, folded some over. And now I am going to take my sunflowers they look kind of sad, kind of bare, but I'm gonna show you how you can make these a little bit thicker and a little bit more lush. So these are pretty much on buttons on the stems. They're like locked into little buttons. You're gonna pull your flower apart, layer one on top of the other, lock it back in that little button, and then it is perfect. Look at that. Isn't that better? That's so much better. It looks so high quality now. You can put it back on your stem, and begin placing it down in the arrangement. So here we go again, pulling it off. Now you can really see what I'm doing. Pop the back off, lay it down. I'm gonna take the petals off of another flower, pulling it right out of there. Place it down, snap it together, put the stem back on it. And then now we have a really lush, beautiful flower. Looks so healthy and bright. I love sunflowers. Okay, so now we're gonna put another one in. Now we're gonna do these at different heights and you can give a little bend to the top to make them face outward. I am gonna use three because why not? I had six flowers so I was able to do three thicker flowers. And I'm gonna put this one in at a little bit of a lower level. I am going to change our angle here in just a moment. Now you can see all my junk in the background. All right, so now I'm just going to start cutting off the greenery. Y'all excuse my dog, she's barking at the neighbors who are doing some yard work. Okay, so I'm clipping these off. Cut them off into manageable pieces. You want some to be a little bit shorter because, you know, it just depends on how deep the cup is that you're using or the mug. And then I'm just gonna start placing them around. I like to kind of bend a little bit because I want these to be toward the bottom in our first layer. You can pretty much see what I'm doing here. You don't need me to tell you everything, do you? I chose the lighter pieces off of these picks rather than the darker green because I wanted to keep this super bright and fallish and transitioning to Halloweenish, so Halloween, if you want to call it that. Continue around here until I get the coverage that I like. I like it, you know, pretty thick. Who doesn't love a beautiful fall leaf, right? Love that foliage, love the beautiful color. Now I'm just gonna cut this, these bigger picks off into smaller pieces and add those here and there. So we have our larger flower. We have our flower that's, you know, a bit smaller, but pretty much the same coloring. And of course you don't have to do that. If you don't like the monochrome, you can add something different. I will be adding in some white in just a moment. They're like little white black-eyed Susans, I believe are what they're called, and they, they grow along the ditches and the banks here where we live. Ours are usually yellow, but these are white, and that's okay because I needed a little contrast. I had to break up some of that orange and gold. And I'm just gonna add those little bunches here and there. You can definitely get something similar at the Dollar Tree. And then I've taken my triple picks here and pulled them apart. They will pull apart. They're just wrapped with like a floral tape on the bottom so that you have three individual picks. I'm gonna add a tall one to the top. 
I'm gonna add another one here and then turn it and add another one sort of on the other side so that it, they are kind of dispersed evenly so you can see the candy corn no matter which way you turn it. Then you can add in the cute little picks to really make it look like Halloween and I'll just kind of put those here and there. I think I used two bats and two pumpkins to make sure that on each side you can see them. Really cute. And y'all, this is so cute. This would be the cutest little get well cup or an office, you know, for an office desk or something like that it would be so cute. Go back through and make sure you have everything exactly how you like it. Cover up your foam. You don't want any of that showing. I like this. This is cute. Y'all can watch my videos Mondays, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it is completely free to subscribe, so I hope you do. The next project is a candy corn sign. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this little sign from Dollar Tree. It's in the regular decor. I'm gonna use a glue stick and then a piece of scrapbook paper. Again, my friend Marsha gave me bunches of scrapbook paper. So I've got some little wooden letters and a variety of paints and three different paint brushes because you're not going to use the same brush. Little tip for you, a dot of hot glue on the back of little things that you're trying to paint will hold those things in place while you were trying to paint them instead of them scooting all around the place. So I hope this is helpful to you because it has helped me a bunch. I'm just going to use my metal ruler here. You can use any ruler. You can eyeball this whichever way you prefer to do it. You can use a straight piece of paper, whatever. And then I'm just going to lightly put in some lines here because I want these letters to look like actual candy corn. So there's going to be a variety of colors on here and I want to have this striped. So I'm just kind of moving it around and I did not measure it, I just slide it around until I get it where I think I need it. You could also, instead of doing it this way, you could also do like every other one a different color. Whatever you like. So I'm going to start off with the yellow. Yellow on the bottom of candy corn. I'm going to go underneath our line here. Up to the line, over it, you know, if I can get it slightly over it to cover it up. You won't necessarily be able to see those lines whenever we're done painting. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Also try to get around the outside of the letter and on the inside of the letter so you can cover that up too. So it looks like it is a complete job and that you put a lot of thought into it. All right, then we're gonna go with the orange next and do the same thing. I don't want these colors bleeding together and you have to be very careful and make sure that your layers are dried in between if you don't want them to blend or kind of, um, you know, one color to spread into the other color. You can dry those. You can use a hair dryer. You can just walk away from it and work on something else and let it dry on its own. Or you can use a little dryer like I use, a little heat gun. So I've pulled the metal piece off of here. I don't need it. I'm going to take this Diamond Cosmetics. I love this. I got this recently at Dollar Tree and it is so good. It is so much stronger than a regular nail file or emery board. It really works nicely. So I'm just trying to get the little glue spots off of here. They're not really thick, but they're definitely a different texture. So I'm just trying to get that kind of down. Then I'm going to turn my paper over, trace that little dome shape there, cut it out. And it is not the exact same size, but we're going to sand it down. So don't worry about that. It is going to be a little bigger than our project. I'm going to test it out and see, looks good. Then I'm gonna take my glue stick. You can use whatever type of glue you have. This is just the one I have on hand and my experience with Jot Glue from Dollar Tree has been good as well. So you can definitely save some money and get a pack of those. All right, and then I'm going to take my little beautiful piece of paper. You can see the overhang here. Okay, then I'm going to kind of press it down Make sure it goes to the bottom and then use this little tool here 
to just scrape it. If you don't have a special tool, that's okay. You can use like an old credit card or an old insurance card, something like that, and that'll work great for this too. I wanna make sure that every bit of the glue is touching every bit of the paper. So far, so good. Now we have our little overhang that we're gonna shear off. So I'm just gonna take my sanding block and I am holding on to my paper with my thumb and I'm gonna start shearing this off. This will give it a nice clean edge. If you don't like the white that it appears to be whenever you take it off, that is okay and that's very easily fixed. You can either rub a, um, a pencil over it, you can use a little bit of antiquing wax on a baby wipe, whatever you would like, but I like that it gives it almost like a little trimmed out effect. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna take some chalkboard paint just because this is the paint I had on hand. You can use any black here really, or you could use orange or yellow, but I thought that the black would be really nice with the pop of those letters um, standing out against it. I thought it would be really good together. So we all know how to paint. You can see me leaving this paint clip in for you, but um, just gonna be sure that you go all around your edges too to make it nice and complete. You could certainly paint the entire back side or you could save the back side to do a different project. Maybe you wanna do a Thanksgiving project on the back. So now these are dry and they just pop off. Isn't that nice? I got my yellow, my orange, and my white. Now we can see where we wanna place them. You can center them, um, you can do whatever you want. And hey, if you don't have wood, if you don't have these little wood pieces, which by the way, you can get something similar at Dollar Tree, you can always just use stickers. You can use sticker letters here. And if you don't have paint or whatever. Now because this sits down, uh, I don't have an overhang to hang the Y off and that's why I painted it this way and that's why I'm positioning it this way. So the pattern continues even with the Y up high you can see that it looks cute together. I think it looks cute. And then we're going to add some embellishments to it, of course. I have a variety of ribbons. You can use whatever you like. I'm just trying to go with the colors that we already have. So I'm using yellow, white, orange, and then some white polka dot and some black polka dot. Cutting those down into five inch pieces here. You could also use raffia if you would prefer it. You could use um, colored cording or a jute. You can make a jute bow here if you wanted. You could leave a bow off and not put anything on here if you wanted to. Whatever you choose to do is okay. So now I have two of each one. I'm going to take this thinnest orange ribbon and just cut off about eight inches. It's just gonna be used to tie it together anyway. And then I'm just going to start a pattern like an X, doing an X on top of an X on top of an X. I like the thicker ribbon under. See, if I put that yellow on top of that orange, you won't, it's not really gonna stand out. So I'm gonna add another cross of the thicker ones. And then I'm going to, see there's some little tape on there sticking to my hands. I got to the end of that roll and it had the little tape on it. And then this little ribbon's got the little fringy pieces on it. Okay, so, I'm gonna just flip over the stack and then lay it on top of my thinner ribbon. You could always start off, put your thin, thinner ribbon on the table before you start your stack and then stack, stack it upside down. That might make it easier for you. You know, whatever way, you learn as you're crafting the ways that are easiest for you and that are kind of unique to you. You'll have lots of people comment that they don't do it that way and that they have better results and that is totally fine if that works for them but you got to find a, a routine and a technique that works for you so that you don't feel like you are lower than somebody else's expectations right and the whole point is just to get it done to get it done to have the joy that comes from seeing something that you made handmade and to enjoy yourself that's what it's about we got to stay positive so what you see me doing now is just kind of finishing off the thicker ribbons with a little dovetail. And then the thinner ribbons, you could just cut those at a slant if you would like. You know, whatever is the easiest, you can do it that way. 
I'm just kind of adjusting these a bit. I have a little bit of slack in my knot so I can pull these around just a tad. And then fluffing it out from the center so that the bow reaches around a little bit further. And I'm going to work on my little candy corn piece that I want to add. I'm going to cut that down the middle. Really easy to do with this utility knife. It, they cut so easy, but just be very careful and keep your fingers out of the way when you do this. I believe you could use a bread knife if you don't have a utility knife because it's a thin blade. So I think it would work for this too. And now we have two. I'm gonna hot glue this right here on the side. I'd already tried some little different layouts to see how I wanted it to look. And then I'm gonna start adding down my little candy corn. Doesn't matter how you put these on here either. This is just the way I like it. And this is how it will look. This would be really cute on a candy bar, right? Yes. Here are the projects with the candy corn from Dollar Tree. I've added a little string of lights here to show you how you can embellish your own. We got three projects and I still have lots of candy corn. Here's our little arrangement that you can make and give to a friend as a little pick me up or keep it for yourself in your workspace. Brighten up your day a bit. And then our candy corn wreath, which is absolutely my absolute favorite. All right, the first project is gonna be a Halloween wreath. We're gonna start off with an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. We're gonna have some deco mesh. This is the 12 inch and some pipe cleaners. Some of these berry picks, ornaments of whatever color you like, whatever size, and some ribbon. We're gonna start off by prepping this wreath. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners. You can see I'm not wearing my glasses here. Couldn't see where I was going. And I'm going to twist one pipe cleaner around each of the little crossbars. You wanna go around it so that it doesn't slip up and down. So you're gonna go across. You can see clearly what I'm doing here, I believe. And then you're gonna continue all the way around. Then we're gonna start on the outer ring. We're gonna go on the outside middle and twist it around and you can see it moves a little bit. You can use a dot of hot glue um, on the cool temperature on your gun so that you don't burn yourself or use your finger protectors. And we're gonna do that for each of these little sections on this wreath frame. Continuing around. And so we have the, I think we end up with about 16 of these all the way around. Yep, 16. So now I'm gonna start with my deco mesh. If you don't have the really, uh, the 12 inch and you just have the smaller ones like from Dollar Tree, just be sure that you layer them up and then you'll have a thicker, wider piece to work with. So I'm gonna take a little section, bunch it up in my hand, place it down in between, starting off on that inside ring here or it's the center ring, but we're gonna call it the inside because we are gonna start our, we only are using the inside and the outside of our wreath. So on the inside, we're gonna go around and make nine or 10 inch poofs here. So I'm just using my ruler underneath to give me a guide to see how big I want these poofs to be. And I'm gonna continue around just on the inside, just like this. Just takes a couple of twists. Just be sure that you're pushing it all the way down so that when you are making the next poof, you don't pull anything loose. Just a couple of twists. Gonna go around and do the same thing. I can see through my mesh here and I can see my ruler underneath. There's probably an easier way to do this. I've seen people use their cutting mats to measure and that's a perfect idea but I have paint all over mine right now, so we're gonna do it this way. Maybe you don't have a cutting mat. Just grab your ruler and you can do it like this. We need options, right? We need options so we have no excuse not to craft. 
All right, so we're going to go back around. And when we get back to the beginning part, I'm just going to unwrap it and put that poof right on top. You can see I'm using my middle fingers there to push it down to make sure it stays down in there. Now we're going to move our mesh to the outside. And again, I'm using my ruler as my guide. You're going to do a 9 or 10 inch poof, whatever size you prefer. The bigger the poof, the larger the reef is going to be in the end. Continue around. Make another poof. And I just kind of tuck my edges underneath a little bit. And that helps that poof to stand out. Tighten that one down in there and just keep going. I hope you can see what we're doing here. All right, now so we're back to the beginning. And I'm just going to cross over that area where I started. I'm going to start poofing that stuff out, moving that stuff around, closing your gaps if anything moved around. That's why gluing those pieces down, those pipe cleaners down, can be helpful. All right, so then I wanted to use this. I got this at the thrift store. And I wanted to use this to kind of go across the top, but it's so tightly wound when I put it down and you can just, you know, we're going to use this one just on the outside of the ring of the wreath on the outer ring. There we go. Um, it had such a beautiful curl. I thought, you know what? Let's just go with this curl. It's something different. I've never seen it before and I've never done it before. So we're gonna leave this in a curl. We're gonna let this thing do what it does. And I have to say, it reminds me of my hair. I have curly hair or wavy combination, whichever one. Sometimes I like to leave it curly and let it do its thing. And sometimes I like to straighten it. But right now we're gonna go with the curl, right? It's plenty of humidity in the South where we live. We're gonna let this thing have its curl. So I'm just going to continue around and I'm not measuring here because I'm just using my poof as a guide to see how far I want this to go. If you don't like the curls, you don't have to do it this way. You know, you can straighten it out, but I think it gives it a little more interest and dimension. And like I said, it's different than I've ever done before. So I like it. It's good to try new things, you know, and to bring you new things. So you're going to continue around like this and the curl will stay in there if you just loosely move it, you know, instead of trying to pull it tight. And you can see what it looks like. Now this is pre-puff. I have not gone through here and fluffed it out yet. Now we're going to start with our ribbons and I chose this. This is like a fabric ribbon. It might even not even be ribbon. It may be something else, but I got it at the thrift store and I thought this beautiful black and white stripe would be gorgeous on this wreath. I love a vintage look, and this screams vintage to me with all the black, white, and orange. So we're going to go with it. I'm just going to put my wired ribbon underneath and this on top. Now this has no wire, but that is not going to be a problem in this situation because the poofs that are on the form of the wreath actually help give body to the ribbon and hold it in place. And you'll see what I mean shortly. So if you don't have wired ribbon, you can definitely um, just go ahead and use what you have. I'm going to go back and forth. So now I started on the outside, I went to the inside. I'm going to go to the next pipe cleaner set on the outside. I'm going to bunch this up and I'm doing about 9, 10 inches, the same thing as the poofs that are underneath. So they're all about the same size. And I'm going to twist that around tightly. And then I'm going to jump back over into the inside and put it on the inside of the wreath. And then I'll go back to the outside, inside, outside, inside, all the way around. If you run out of ribbon, let me show you what you can do. So I ran out of ribbon here. I'm just going to lay the new piece on top of the old piece, overlap it, put my ribbon back on top, and then twist it around. And when it's underneath, you barely even notice it. You won't even notice in the end that I ran out of ribbon. So you just continue to go around here. I'm going to start back where I left off and go to the inside. When I get back to my original spot, I am going to go ahead and trim it down to make it a little more manageable. And I cut it at about, I think I had it at about 12 inches so that I would have plenty to lock in with my pipe cleaners here. And then I still have my 9 or 10 inch poof and I have enough to close up in the pipe cleaner. 
So I hope that makes sense. I think that what I say, if it doesn't make sense to you, that watching it will make a little more sense. And I'm just going to trim this off at a little bit of a slant. All right. So now you can go around and poof everything out and pull your ribbons apart. Now we're going to pull a stripe and then a solid, a solid and then a stripe, a stripe and then a solid, a solid and a stripe. And we're going to continue this all the way around. And it's going to look like this is woven all the way through the wreath. And I love it very pretty and I'm so glad that I did use that ribbon um, you can see it standing up nicely on its own even though it doesn't have any um, wire in it still standing up nicely moves around just as easily as the wired ribbon that is underneath it and this orange was actually from the Easter um, the Easter selection that was put out but you can use whatever kind of orange you have um, and I'm sure you can find some orange this time of year with fall and Halloween so I know that I'm going to use a sign, and this is the one I chose from Dollar Tree. Love these colors. I got it last year and had put it aside. I'm going to cut the hanger off because we don't need it. I'm going to cut a couple of strips of paper. We're going to use hot glue, and we're going to make something to attach this to the wreath. So adding a little hot glue and then placing this down. This will help keep it from popping off the back when you are trying to tighten it up on your wreath and secure it in the wreath. Continue around till you got all four corners done. And then these are the ornaments that I chose and I'm just popping them out to see where I want to place them and to make sure that I have enough. And I actually do have enough. I did try some orange ones um, before this, but I did not like the way that they looked. So with the pipe cleaners that are left, if you do not want those, you can cut them off. You can wind them back into the wreath, whichever way you want. But I like to curl them around my finger and leave them because it looks like another little spooky element, like little spider legs or bug legs or snakes coming out of here or worms, whatever. I like it. I'm going to leave it. But the ones on the outside of the wreath, be sure you tuck those under. If you don't want to curl them on your finger, you can certainly use like a screwdriver, a pencil, something like that, and twist around on that. All right, then I'm going to leave these tops on the wreath because they, I mean, on the ornament, <laughs> because it will help tuck them down in the little crook there. And I am going to add some hot glue and then just press it down. I'm going to hold it down because the wreath, it tries to kind of push back up because it's, you know, it's thick. It's a bouncy wreath. And I'm going to keep adding my glue. Now these ornaments are actually uh, glass ornaments, uh, so they're breakable, but use plastic if you would like. Uh, what I love about these particular ornaments is that they don't have a seam on them like some of the plastic ones do, and it gives, uh, to me, a more expensive look, you know, a higher end look. But you can see that some have gold tops and some have silver tops. They were all collected uh, at the thrift store over the past year. I just grab things when I think I can use them, I see them, and I... I think I can use them in a project, so I'll go ahead and grab them. And so far, this is how it looks. Isn't that pretty? And then here's how our sign will go on it, right in the center. So I'm going to just push those little uh, hanging pieces or my little pipe cleaners to the back. And I'm going to center it and then flip it over. And then I can just reach in there and fish out my wires and go right around the two inside rings and I'm doing about an inch and a half up. Now, if you do inch and a half up on each one of these, then your wreath will be nicely positioned on the top without any corners poking down or looking lopsided. So just try to make sure you have the same amount on each corner. I love it. Love it. And I love that you can actually get all your supplies from Dollar Tree if you wanted to. Yes, true enough. Some of mine are thrifted, but that's okay. You can definitely get what you need at the Dollar Tree if you don't have a good thrift store. So just fluffing again to make sure that everything looks nice. And I want to add a little more. So Dollar Tree has berry picks and they have these little, I don't know if they're cupcake picks that are like pumpkins and things, but I love these as little, I love these as little beads. So I'm going to save these to use on the ribbon and I'm going to use some wood slices or half wood beads to use to cover up the holes and to put in a couple of other places on the sign so that it kind of looks like it's tacked down. So I just put them here and there. I definitely need them on the top to cover those holes up. 
and then just wherever else you feel like you have a little extra space. Then I am going to take one of these pieces. Each of these little picks have a wire on the back. I just cut off the wire and then I'm going to add some hot glue and put it on each little loop of the black and white ribbon. I love that. It looks whimsical to me. And just enough orange in there. I love the vintagey colors, but you could also argue that this is a farmhouse if you would like. I think it is stunning. You could add lights if you wanted to. You could change your ornaments to a different color, whatever you like. The next project is a Halloween Hollow. This is a cute little village. Y'all gonna love this. So you're gonna go to Dollar Tree and pick up some of these little cute little houses, little gnome villages, fairy garden pieces, whatever you want to call it. I have two new ones and this was one I had from before and my owl I had before. I just went and took it out of our fairy garden in the yard. I picked up some more of these pieces for Halloween. These are painted very nicely. None of that sloppy stuff like that's on the houses there. I'm going to fix these houses. I took them out and gave them a good coat of black paint each one and while they're drying I'm going to work on the platform or the little, I don't know, the area, the little town that we're going to be trick or treating in. So I'm going to slice one of these foam balls. One's going to be a little higher than the other because we're going to make a uh, dimension here and we're going to give our houses a little base at different levels. So I decided this one needs to be a little bit more short than the other one, a little shorter. I'm just using my, my little metal ruler here to do that. I use it for my styrofoam all the time. They have pool noodle knives though at Dollar Tree now, but they would work great for this. I'm going to add some cool temp hot glue and I'm going to put this down on my wood slice. If you don't have a wood slice, do not worry about it. You can get round wood pieces or MDF pieces at Dollar Tree. You can use an old round sign, whatever you have. And then this I got thrifted, but I know that they have had sheets of this before at Dollar Tree. So this is like a mossy sheet piece. And then you can use like a fast grab tacky glue. You can use cool temp hot glue. You can use whatever type of um. I don't know, adhesive that you want to use. If you use something like a super glue, it's going to take a whole lot longer for you to get this project done because you have quite a bit of coverage that you need to do. So I'm just kind of sliding this around and I did start off with this tacky glue because I thought it would work good, but it goes through the mesh backing and it was sticking to my fingers and I was making an even bigger mess than you are already going to make with this. Be sure you cover your surface or you're going to really be making a mess. Where I need to give more dimension and wrap around those little round spots that are going to be heels, I just give a little cut and just lay it down. It very smoothly kind of combines into each other. It just kind of, you don't even really see a bunch of gaps or areas. You see how it looks. I mean, there are a couple of places, but you can fix that with cool temperature hot glue. If you don't find these sheets, you can just use the moss that you get in bags, or you can use something out of your yard or green, maybe some green felt. Okay, so all of these are black now and I'm gonna start covering my own. I wanted these to look, of course I like them whimsical, but I want them to look a little more rustic as well as being kind of spooky and Halloween-y. So each one of these are gonna get a coat of paint, plus I give detail work. I use gray and green and orange and browns in the project. I use also a darker gray, so light and dark gray for the bricks. Um, just letting you know that ahead of time. So this is all dry and this is going to be our base. And now I'll show you how each one of these look after I finished. Doesn't that look much better? Much better. And then here's another one. Yeah, this is so very much better. I love the forms, but sometimes the paint is so sloppy on these things and then this one I turned this little mushroom into a little pumpkin mushroom now you just get to decide where you want to put them and flatten out the tops of your heels so that you can actually glue them down on a flat surface I just use the bottle for that and then you can kind of play around and see which one you want to go where and then put on your hot glue and again you want to use cool temp because you got styrofoam under there that that would likely melt. I'm just gonna press it down and hold it there for a minute to make sure that it stays. And then you can move on to the next little houses.
it really doesn't matter where you put them which order you put them in and for that matter it doesn't matter which houses you pick up at Dollar Tree whatever you have you want to use go right ahead and use it these look rustic to me and that's why I chose them so the little mushroom and a stone house and a pine cone Look how bright that yellow is in the windows. It looks like they're lit up like a Thomas Kincaid painting. I love it. So now we need to make a little more of a curve or a little more of a hill going up to the house. I'm just going to use a little triangle piece of leftover um, floral foam. And then I'm just going to tack down some more of the little grass sheets. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make it a little more of a curve going up like a hill. It gives it more dimension, it gives it more interest. It's obviously not lifelike, but it gives it a little more, I don't know, it's a little more convincible, I guess. Convincing. Convincible? What? I, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I need more coffee. <laughs> okay, so if you use your heat gun on here, it will help get rid of all your little glue strain because you're going to have a lot of them using that cool temp. And it also will help shrink that down a little bit uh, onto one another. It kind of melts it together. So I went into the driveway, I picked up some rocks, washed them off, and have brought them in so that I can add them to this little scenery, to our Halloween hollow. And I'm just going to put them around, kind of like uh, maybe stone walls or something, you know, retaining walls here and there. And then we'll make, you could also make like a path or a little driveway or road, you know, just to give you some ideas because Definitely, you don't have to do things exactly like I have. You could just be motivated to do this yourself, any way that you like. So now I kind of have somewhat of a divider here between our houses. I want to have some steps going up to this one, so I'm just tucking some around here. And I'm just kind of choosing the ones that look a little more like they fit together. This makes me go back to the days when we had to make little projects like this for school, or we had to make little terrariums for school. This is really, this was fun for me. This was very, very fun. It's a playful little thing to do. And maybe you could have your grandkids or your kids join in and give you some ideas or help you with something like this. So this is how it looks so far. And I'm gonna continue to show you. You're gonna see it from the top looking down. But I'm going to continue to pick it up and show you as we move along. So I'm going to take just a little tree that um, I had from Christmas. It's just a little brown tree. I'm going to break one of these twigs from Dollar Tree and add some hot glue. And now we have a trunk. And then I'm just going to add it down between two trees in the back here. And these trees came in a pack. Uh, there was a green one and a brown one in each one. They may have came from Walmart, but I got them at the thrift store. They might have come from Walmart, though, originally. Then I'm going to use a bigger stick to make this tree even taller, because like I said, we want height and dimension, right? I'm going to shrink down the little glue that's all over the place again, and then this is what it looks like with the trees. And then here are all the little creatures that we have to use. Little creatures, signs trick-or-treaters and you're just going to start placing these around where they make sense to you and you can you can move some things if you don't like it so i want my owl on top of the house ideally an owl would not be nesting in the top of a house but i like it there i want him to be watching over he's a wise old owl we got to give him a nice soft nest so got some peat moss nope this is not peat moss this is spanish moss and I'm going to just wind it up. I twisted it into a string and then wind it up. And it will pretty much catch onto itself. And then trim off all the little crazy stray things going on here. The little hairs and such. I'm going to paint the bottom where I cut off all the excess on that owl. With my little bullnose cutters there. After he's dry, I'm going to hot glue him in his nest. And then we'll put him right up here near the chimney in the top of this house. Look at his overlook there. Yes, he's happy there. He's keeping all the trick-or-treaters safe. So then I'm just gonna take my little signs 
And I'm just going to place them here and there, almost like it's Halloween night and kids are trick-or-treating. You see, I peeled that one up. I wanted to move it so it came up nicely. Just be careful and slow when you do it. And I decided to put a cat and a jack-o'-lantern right in that spot. Look how cute. Then I'm going to add two little trick-or-treaters. I've put the mummy there and the little witch. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to turn it around because I want some interest on the back side as well. Kind of a surprise because you won't necessarily expect to see this. So we're going to hide a little kitty in the back behind the house and under the tree. He snuck off with a pumpkin. And then I'm going to add a little sign that says beware. Cute, cute. Okay, y'all, it's time for the 16,000 subscriber giveaway. It's time to treat you, so I'm going to do that. I need you to pause this, read all the instructions, and then do what it says. Trick or treat light box. All right, we're going to take a bank from the Dollar Tree, napkins of your choice, some spider rings, possibly these necklaces, and some Mod Podge. I'm going to take the bank apart, and it just fell apart, so, you know, that's always nice. A little less worse for, work for me to have to do. On the inside of the box is where this is stamped, and it's like painted on or whatever on there. So I'm just taking my little um, knife here and scraping it off without scratching my glass. I'm going to use my little vacuum here and suck out all that glitter. And then I'm going to wipe it down with a little alcohol and a paper towel on the front and on the back of the glass. I'm going to paint the backing white. And the reason I'm painting this white is because I want the brightness of the white to be underneath the orange, which will make it a lot lighter instead of muddy looking if you put it on the brown. I'm carefully, carefully, and slowly using my rotary blade and my mat to cut out the trick-or-treat on this little napkin. This is not a dinner size napkin. This is smaller than that. It's two plies, so I'm just gonna separate my plies Okay, some footage is missing, so just go along with it here. Let's pretend like it's the backing. We're going to put Mod Podge on it. We're going to take a brush and go both directions, all the way to the corners. We're going to take our napkin, place it in the center. You're going to hold it and press outward, gently, gently tapping and pressing outward to get your wrinkles out as much as you can. Gently, gently, gently. I can't stress gently enough. Then, after it's dry, we're going to take some ribbon to trace it out. And we're going to put a black ribbon. You can definitely get these at most Dollar Trees now. Going to use some hot glue to attach it to the back. You don't have to use any glue on the front. You see, you can just pull that back and forth until you get it exactly level. And then you can glue it on. Okay, so once that is on, you're going to take your orange Rick Rack. This is what I have. I got it at the thrift store, but you can use a different, or you don't have to use anything at all right here. Or you could use jute if you wanted. Then you're going to do the same thing here, a little hot glue, and then this is how it will look. Okay, so we're using our imagination. We are also going to do the sides and the bottom. We're going to take two of those little rings with the stones. I chose orange, black, and white in most of my projects here, so we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut the ring section off of the spiders, and I'm going to put them layered over the edge and onto the center, and I'm going to add some hot glue, and then just place it down where they are facing each other, very nicely facing each other. Okay, and then if the sides were done, you get the idea. That's how it would look. Okay, so you can see up there in the corner, that's how it looks when it is done. And I'm going to now take some lights and put on the inside of the box. Now, I have cork lights, but Dollar Tree does have lights that you can use, that you put um, the batteries in, and they're on a little line like this on a wire, and they have little lights in there. You can definitely use those. The wire is bendy, and you can use cool temp glue on these. So just be sure that you do that. You can use the little clamps to hold it in place until your glue sets up so that nothing pulls loose in the corner and you don't burn your fingers. And you're going to do that all the way around until you've used up all the wire. Leave your little 
battery pack on the outside and it is thread through the bottom through the bank uh, opening where you would put the coin so that's how you get the how you would get it in there all right so now I'm gonna press it back down and it really pops back in easily then I'm gonna use some hot glue and just go right in between in a couple of sections on each side so that it does not pop back out because we flipped it upside down where the opening for the coins is on the bottom instead of the top then you can just hold it put something on it to hold it in place until it is dry and this is how it is going to look when you turn it on it's gonna be nice and gorgeous isn't that pretty I love that and the lights just sparkle on those spiders it's really eye-catching this would be so cute on a tear tray or anywhere in your house and you can see how how it looks when we turn the lights off so bright right I love this I hope you try it I hope you try at least one of these projects they're super cool and easy to make with Dollar Tree items and more so here's our beautiful wreath this is our first project love it if you love it I would appreciate a thumbs up it's very helpful to my channel I believe in you and I know that you can make beautiful creations of your own have some confidence in your abilities here is our little Halloween hollow I just wrapped some lights around the edge of it I didn't glue them down or anything just to show you what you can do and you could wrap some lights around their trees you could wrap it around all through here if you wanted to I always love knowing that the love that I put out there for you guys is reciprocated and that you appreciate what I'm doing here on my channel for the first project we have a grapevine wreath we're going to take this gorgeous little sign from Dollar Tree it's the candy corn sign it says trick-or-treat we're gonna take some of this mesh tubing some ribbon of your choice a grapevine wreath I've got some bittersweet a variety of yellow and orange foliage some are from the Dollar Tree and one I think came from Walmart but was thrifted and then I want to show you real quick how to fix a wreath that is out of shape now this is sort of an oval shape or an oblong shape you can just take a little bit of uh, floral wire and fix the form whenever it goes flat or you can use a little bit of jute see there now I got the same width on both sides it was a little lopsided on one side and that that does happen with natural um, items they shrink and expand so all right we're going to pull the bow off of here very carefully so we don't peel off the paint and then take a look at these picks we're going to cut these off not too long but long enough that we have something to thread through the grapevine wreath so I know I want it to go this way and I'm going to just start adding in my picks the greenery I chose to add in to the bottom um, toward the bottom so like about halfway down I guess and it's gonna go around the bottom and I'm gonna keep all of these in the same um, slant I guess the same angle gonna put them all in kind of going downward till we get toward the middle and then on the other side we will start over also going downward I'll continue along here trying to vary the color a little bit that way I get a good representation of the yellows and the oranges I like that this is sort of a rustic look it is definitely Halloween but it I'm certainly feeling the rustic fall vibes in that it is a grapevine wreath which is woody and the foliage which is definitely changing colors for fall so I guess if it didn't say trick-or-treat this could actually be fall and Halloween now once it's all filled in I'm just gonna fluff a little bit then the little pieces of bittersweet that I took apart I'm just gonna start adding those in here or there I want them to extend out uh, beyond the wreath they're gonna be farther away from the wreath than the greenery which I think is a cute look it gives that little flyaway look that Ramon 
from Ramon at Home talks about. And I'm just going to add them here and there. I don't, I'm not looking for a symmetrical look on this project. Um, so you see I've got the greenery higher on the right than on the left, but we're going to have a bow on the left. So no worries about that. Now we have to have something to attach this down to the sign. And rather than just putting down hot glue and then hoping that it clings, which it won't because the hot glue is going to go right through the wreath, we're going to use pipe cleaners. We're going to add some hot glue and then you can put a little piece of scrap paper over that. That's going to help secure it. And then you can bend these up and we'll be able to thread these through and put them on there and possibly take it off. If you wanted to use this after Halloween, you could just remove this and you would have a beautiful fall wreath maybe for Thanksgiving. Friendsgiving, whichever you prefer. Now I'm just going to easily thread this through. This grapevine wreath is not very tightly wrapped. You can see actually light through it and that makes it easier to attach things down. Just thread it through there and then twist it around. I always add links underneath the video so if there's anything that you need um, you can find it in my Amazon store most likely or you can leave me a question I'll be happy to help you. Alright so here is my bow maker. I made this myself. I am going to link the video on how you can make one. It was very easy so you don't have to worry about that. Very easy. If you're not able to do it for yourself if you have somebody who can help you it would be a great help if you have arthritis if you have any kind of problems with your hands this can help you um, I'm not saying you have to have it because you can certainly make this kind of bow without it but I love to be able to use my bow maker and I want to share with you how you can make one if you got some scraps around and you don't have to spend the money so I'm just going to make these loops the same size on both ends and I have about seven inches for each one and then the tails are just a tad longer than that. I'm going to cut that off. This is a sort of a satin ribbon and it has a black stitched wired edge. This black ribbon is very good quality but it is not wired but it is stiff enough that it's going to hold itself and you'll see that soon. This one doesn't have any type of a pattern on it. It's exactly the same on both sides so we don't have to twist like we did with the orange one. So I'm just getting an idea there of how big I want it to be. And I know that I want it to be about an inch smaller than the orange one that's underneath. So I'm going to do the same process and just loop over on this side. I like to fold mine in the middle and then push them down. It's a little bit easier for me to handle that way. It keeps it from flipping. And then we'll trim that tail. And then my burlap ribbon is going to go on top of that. This is going to be a pretty bow, y'all, but you can definitely either skip the bow if that's not your thing, or you could do any type of bow that you've seen me do before that you like. I do have a bow video, so that can help you if you don't like this particular one. Now, this white bow is going to be, or cream-colored bow, is going to be an inch smaller than the black one. You can see, like, little steps. Little steps. And this one is wired also. In my experience, if you have a bow that doesn't have wire, you want to put that one sort of toward the middle. It just works better that way because the wired ribbons around it will give it a little body and that's helpful. All right, now I'm going to take this mesh tubing and just make like it looks like a shoelace bow, but we're going to continue to make loops back and forth, back and forth until we have three or four on each side, whatever thickness you like. You can find this type of tubing at most Dollar Trees in a variety of colors. This one is something I already had on hand. Okay, so then we trim that one off. I'm going to slip my tie underneath the bottom while I'm holding on to that stack of bows. Okay, so I'm just going to just going to loop it, but not tighten it all the way down. I'm going to grab it toward the center move it up you can see the indentions where the poles were just slide that right into it then you can pull it just a tad more because y'all give me a hand clap here look what i did i remembered to put the pipe cleaner in the back i mean look at that i did i remembered this time i never remembered to do that once you have tightened it down you can clip it off 
and start dovetailing those ends. You want it to have a nice finish. If you don't want to dovetail, you can cut it at a slant. But I like the dovetail. And we're going to do each one of those tails the same way, except for the mesh tubing on top. And we can just leave that alone and trim it up later when we get ready. Okay, so now we're going to fluff. We're going to pull the bows up and kind of spread those out. And you see the black is doing great on its own. Even though it doesn't have any wire in it, it looks good in there. It gives a lot of depth. I like that. It's pretty. All right, so now we're going to feed it through. And you can see here that I'm putting it a little bit off to the left of the candy corn. And feeding it through there just like we did the sign that we put on. And I will pull this tightly, twist it around, and then kind of rotate it down behind. And you can trim it off or you can just fold it over. And when you fluff your bow, you won't be able to see it. Now is the time. You can really get an idea of the size of the bow and how big you want it to be. And you can start clipping off the ends a little bit shorter if you need them. And I like these a little shorter. Gives it a little fly away. I think it's pretty that way. But again, do this your own way. With a bow, without a bow, different colored bows, different size ribbon, different amounts, make it as thick as you like, or don't put it on there at all. That is completely up to you, but the good thing is you can take it off after Halloween and just have a beautiful piece on your door without any hint of Halloween. All right, so I'm gonna take some more of this and we're going to make another little bow like we did on the bow maker. So if you don't have a bow maker, you can do it by hand just like this. I'm gonna have two loops on each side and we're gonna add just a little bit of an accent down in the greenery. You can take another little piece, tie it around the middle, tie it in a double knot, and then we are going to be tucking that down into our leaves there on the bottom. You can wire this and put it down instead of gluing it if you would like, but it does sit nicely, and it flips out of my hand, it does sit nicely down into the wreath. You can put it kind of on the branch of the leaves so that the glue doesn't sink down in there, and just hold it in place with your scissors or a popsicle stick or a finger protector on your hands. Be very careful. We'll do the same thing on this side and press it down and hold it until the glue cools or sets up or dries. And then in order for this not to be in the way, I'm just gonna add a dot, just a little dot of glue to hold these leaves back. Look at that. That's cute. Do y'all think that's cute? I know if you like a modern look, this is not gonna be your thing. Certainly not gonna be your thing. But my little rustic heart is very happy right now. All right, now we're going to do a pumpkin stack. Almost like a, maybe a topiary you could call it, maybe. So this one is one I got from the thrift store. The lights still work, but I won't be using the lights in it. You're gonna have a variety of candy corn colored paints, which I love, paint brushes. We're gonna start off with some of this yellow. Now, the, I believe this is a sunflower yellow. It's a sort of a goldish yellow, but it happens to match what I have going on in the, the wreath before. So I wanted to use this color. I am just painting over the bottom pumpkin, this beautiful golden yellow color, and the pumpkin on top is going to stay orange. I'm just carefully trying to get up against there without making a big mess. You can add to this, or if you have chalk paint, um, you can either add, I think, baking soda to it. Um, it was a tip that I was given, which of course works and I had forgotten about. Or you can use a chalk paint, whichever way. But I'm running out of chalk paint, so this is what we got. It took me three layers, by the way, drying thoroughly in between the layers, and it does dry down kind of matte. You can see that? But I love the color. I love that orange and yellow together. Gorgeous. I want to make it a little bit bigger, and we need a top to be white, right? Candy corn is yellow, orange, and white. So I'm going to take a little pumpkin. Not entirely sure where this pumpkin came from, but you can get any little random pumpkins at Dollar Tree. And it just happens to fit on the top. And by the way, you can make this with your own little pumpkins. You can just have a large, medium, and small pumpkin, 
paint them these colors and put them together. It just so happens that I had this little arrangement that already had two pumpkins together. All right, so I marked it, I hollowed it out, added some hot glue, and now I'm going to hold it firmly down on top and it looks gorgeous together. I wanna use a little bit of this orange, I, I wanna call this jute for some reason, but this orange twine, and I'm going to tie it on, not too tight, cause it'll pop the hot glue line and then you'll have to start all over. But I'm just gonna tie it where there's no gap and then wrap it around a few times. And I'm doing this because I don't like the way my line looks where I painted it below. So I want to cover that up and I want both, I want it to look intentional in other words. So it will look intentional if both gaps between the pumpkins look the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that right there for this one. You could always add little, little pieces of greenery. You can add whatever you want to do here, but I like the simplicity of this, so I'm gonna leave it this way, but you make yours your own. Whatever makes your little heart joyful and happy, that's what you do. By the way, thank everybody who is leaving tips. I want you to do me a favor, because at some point I would like to share all these wonderful tips. When you get ready to leave a tip, please write tip when you start talking about it. That way, when I go through the comments, I will see exactly who's leaving tips and I'll be able to give you credit for it at some point. Okay, sound good? All right. Now, I'm gonna take this little witch hat that was a barrette that came from a probably Claire's, if I had to guess, and I'm going to make a little hat band for it. It's got little silver spider webs, it's black and it's got a little fur on it, almost like a little boa, so you could actually make your own. And in order to get this hat band to lay flat, I'm gonna cut a couple of little slices in it here and there, add some glue under it, and then lay those folds on top of one another. You don't have to worry about those lines showing up because we're gonna put the rickrack on top and that's gonna keep it nice and smooth. So you see there, now it's gonna lay flat. Then we'll take that rickrack, put it right on top. So if you don't call this trim rickrack, what do you call it? This kind of stuff was all over the place when I was young. People used it in clothing, little kids' clothing, and little people's hair and all that. So what do you call that? I'm going to take a spider ring from Dollar Tree. It was in, actually, I think the spider web stuff. And I'm going to pull, we'll cut off his little ring band and add him right there to the hat. Look how cute that is. I'm gonna pull this little bottom off and we're gonna make, we're gonna take this wire and put it in there so I can bend the tip of the hat. So I'm gonna add hot glue, put it all the way up to the tip, let that glue dry for just a minute in the tip. Then I'll take the stuffing, poke a hole through it and then thread it right back up over that wire. And this is just a little piece of, um, it came off of a, uh, the floral picks I was cutting. So that's the wire that I'm using. And look, now you can bend your little hat tip if you want. I'm gonna feed this back through where the stem was on the pumpkin, add some hot glue down in there, and then I'm just gonna feed it through and sit it down on top of its head. You can take your cool temp glue because this is foam and remember it does tend to melt. Go around and just add the little glue here and there or you could use whatever type of adhesive you wanna use. And this is how cute it's going to look. This is it so far. Now we have to add a face, right? So after a little sip of coffee there, I went in to make a face. And I like the idea of having like a little ghost face here. So I just took an acrylic paint marker. And by the way, those are linked in my store. I do like them. And I'm just going to make some eyes and a mouth. Now I made a little mess up there, but I just fixed it with my finger. You could always go over it with some paint if that happens. And then this is what the little top one is gonna look like. Isn't that cute? Y'all can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Fall to Halloween floral. I had a lot of wonderful comments on the last candy corn floral that I did, so I wanna show you one that you can do for yourself. We're gonna use the picks from Dollar Tree. We're going to use some flowers from Dollar Tree. So I have moms and mini moms. I have yellow and white floral and I have orange floral. And the pumpkin I'm using, I found at the thrift store. 
but you can use a pumpkin bucket or a treat bucket, whatever you want to use here. You could even use a basket. I'll take some foam that I had left over and glue it into the bottom. Once it is set up, we'll start cutting our picks apart. Leave these stems long if you have a deep vessel like mine is. If it's deep like that, you want to make sure they can reach into the foam. Or you can make your foam higher. You can use a bigger piece, whatever you want to do here. I'm just going to go around with my darkest colors first on the bottom. So this is my, my orange. I'm going to push those down and twist them around. You see it does take time. Nothing happens quickly. That's going to look wonderful. It does take a little movement here and there. And depending on how many picks you have, I didn't count ahead of time, so I'm just going to push these in until I get them where I like them. You can pull those leaves up to the top of your stem too. You don't have to leave them halfway down. They will slide up and down for you. Now I'll take the yellowy, orangey looking picks and start adding those in. Some of these have berries and some don't. And I'm just trying to kind of, you know, space them out a little bit. Since this is a round arrangement, I'm trying to space them out just a little. You can move things. I do it all the time. This is not glued down, so feel free to move it. If you look at it and you don't like it, move it. Take it out. Use something else. Maybe you don't like the, the pale colored um, leaves here. Just go ahead and use all of the orange if you want. You don't even have to use orange. You could use burgundy. You can use whatever. But since this is a candy corn video, we're going to go with the candy corn colors. We're keeping it real. Okay. If you like this video, if you share it, it helps me a lot and I surely appreciate it. Okay. Continuing along, sometimes these little stems will bend and you just have to keep fooling with them until you get them there. It does help sometimes to put your hand closer down to the bottom and then press it in so that it doesn't bend. I like my florals very lush. I like a lot in there, but you do what makes you happy. All right, so the mums are a little bit different. Some of them are larger than the other ones, and I like the variety that it gives us. So the first one I put in had a lot of thickness like this one, you know, really long petals. And then the shorter ones, like the one I put in the top, is a little bit smaller. You're going to continue to work around. I generally like to work from the bottoms and then go up, and I like for things to be balanced. I can check by turning it back and forth to make sure that it is balanced. You can turn the heads of your flowers, just bend them a little bit, and that will have them facing outwards. It's wire, so you know, you can, you can bend these, you can manipulate these to be exactly how you want them to be. And I encourage you to do that. So this is how it looks so far, and I think it's a good representation of candy corn, the colors in candy corn, right? So we're gonna take the picks that have the three candy corns on them, and I'm gonna put one right down in the middle. Then I'll put one off to the side here and push that down. And then opposite of that, I will add another one. At first, I thought I liked them, you know, I wanted to put them in and see how they looked sticking straight out. But I didn't really care for that look myself because you could see the black wires and it just didn't look quite right. It kind of interfered with the shape. So I went ahead and took the longest one in the middle and folded it upward and then used my leaves and my florals to kind of fold around the black stems. So it blends in a little bit better. And I do prefer the way that that ended up looking rather than having them sticking straight out. That's the wonderful thing about that, the variety you can have. So this velvet ribbon that comes from Dollar Tree, you only get like three feet on a roll. So don't be fooled by it. I like it though, and I think it would be perfect for this project. So very simple bow, you saw how I made that here. Very, very simple. You're gonna do an awareness, um, like an awareness shape, and then you're just gonna scrunch the middle up, and now you have two little loops and two tails. I have some very thin velvet ribbon that I'm gonna go right around the middle. You can use jute for this, you can use colored twine for this, anything you want in the middle, because it will show on this bow. You will see the center of your ribbon. I'm going to tie this off and then we're going to put a pick on it so that we can stand it up so that we can attach it without using a ton of glue. 
The idea for me in florals is being able to take things apart and use them again. If you really want to save your money, you can take them apart and use them again. If this is something that you want to give as a gift or you want to keep it forever, then by all means, use glue in your foam to hold everything together. So we've dovetailed our ends and our little bow is prim and proper. We're going to add in another stem off of the floral pick. I'm adding some hot glue across the knot and then I'm just going to tie it over the top of that. Now it's going to be very secure and in place right there. I am using some Gorilla Glue throughout this video here and there. Whatever stick I grab, that's what, that's what I'm using. All right, so now we have a pick and I want to add it right in the middle of the candy corn on one side. And I think that is the perfect bow for this little arrangement. So there's another option. If you like these projects, please let me know. If you are going to recreate anything that I have made, feel free to email me. My email address is makingitmyown1 at gmail.com. You can email me a picture and I would love to take a look at it. And at some point, I'd love to feature it on my channel. All right, so for one extra touch, if you want to, these little signs came from Target. You can just take these little signs, add a pick on the back. You can use any little sign from Dollar Tree as well to add just another little splash of Halloween to this. Then you can take this sign out and you have another fall arrangement that you can use after Halloween. How about that? Very easy, it's not glued into there so you can take it out. Here is the final reveal of our three new candy corn projects. We have the little stacked pumpkins. We have our floral here, Halloween to fall floral. And then a grapevine wreath. So keep trying, start somewhere. I've had lots and lots of comments that make my little heart happy Let's say that they are now crafting. They didn't have the courage before, but they are now. And I'm so proud of you. You should know that I'm proud of you. You're doing a wonderful thing and it's so good for your soul. Express yourself. It's so good for you. I encourage positivity on this channel and I encourage positivity in your life long after you leave my videos. We're going to need some of these witch boots and the hat and some felt from Dollar Tree for the first two projects. Take your tags off and remove any extra. The first project is the witch's boots. So we're going to give these little witch's boots up here a makeover. We're going to start off by taking a roll of black felt and cut it into strips about this is, I don't know one and a half or two inch strips these don't have to be perfect just cut them apart so you can manage them you can see the shape under here is really nice and I don't want to pull off the tinsel because it helps hold the shape I'm gonna start by rolling that little piece in half so that I have a nice clean edge for the heel of the boot just rolling it over to see how I wrap it around and I'm going to add some glue here and then take the folded edge downward and press it down. Now, I was all over the place in this video, y'all, so bear with me. I'm going to show you and explain to you as much as I can to make up for my lack of uh, paying attention to the camera. Okay, so now we're going to wrap, just like you're wrapping a bandage. You want it to overlap, and then you can wrap it around the top of the boot to hold it in place like that. Now it's the heel is wrapped and we've got it secured to the upper part of the boot. Now you can just start wrapping it around. You don't have to leave it folded. You can unfold it. This is not precise at all. And you're just going to start going around the boot. Now with this felt, it's a little bit stretchy. So you can tug on it a little bit and put a little pressure on it and, um, and it will give a little bit. So just continue around as you go all the way up to the, I guess, the calf part of the boot and cover up all that tinsel. 
we're going to let it overlap on the top about three quarters, probably three quarters of an inch, I would, I would guess. I'm going to cut off what we don't need, hot glue it down, and then you can take a little bit of hot glue and fold the edge under. This will give you a nice clean edge on the boot and it's going to help cover up some of that tinsel, kind of trap it down in there between the layers so that you don't see it. And don't worry about the inside of the boot, we're just going to leave it like that for now. So, so far this is what we have. Now I have a little area here that is not wrapped, so I'm just going to take another strip and I'm going to tuck it in using my little stick here. Just tuck it in there and then you can add a little bit of hot glue if you want to, but you really don't need it and then just continue to wrap. I kind of hit it under there and I was able to get that little strange area that was hard to reach in my first go around. And you can go around this as many times as you want to till you get the look that you like and the coverage that you like. Again, if you pull, you can see that I'm pulling a little bit. You can kind of extend the amount of felt that you have because it will stretch and it nicely helps cling to itself, which you know is good because it's easier to work with that way. And look at the shape already. It's already looking so much better. All right, now I'm gonna start on the bottom just because I like my seams to be in the back and the bottom and kind of in hidden areas. And I'm gonna wrap around this boot down toward the toe. Pulling in a little bit, it's kind of laying onto the shape of the boot pretty nicely and I, um, I actually this was quite uh, an experience for me because I've never done the little boots before but it was kind of fun the transformation is so worth it too and really it is and wrap around the curl of that toe that little pointy area and then any way you can get that to go down on there just wrap it around that way you want to keep that little hooked shape that little curl there you want to keep it that way so you can see what I'm doing here I'm just kind of pulling it and it's in different directions but it is pressing down that tinsel and making that little toe stick up perfectly well the toe of the boot obviously I don't know maybe a witch does have a curly toe who knows what's under those boots but I'm just going to use a little hot glue and then kind of form it with my fingers and look how gorgeous y'all isn't that pretty Oh, I love this. You could do this with burlap if you wanted to. You know, if you wanted a more rustic look. But for Halloween, I'm gonna keep it all black for witchy. Okay, now we're gonna make a platform for that. So I'm just going to use some paper that coordinates, some paper that I like, and it actually came out of a uh, Halloween paper pack that was gifted to me from a friend. So thank you, Marsha, if you're watching. Then I'm going to cut it down so that it fits my board paint on the back. It's all spray painted. And then I'm just going to place it down on here. I'm going to pat it down with my hands and then I will use a little tool here to help make sure that I have no bubbles and wrinkles. If you don't have spray paint, that's fine. You can just use a regular paint that you like. And I went with slate because it matches better with this dark gray background. But you could certainly use black or, or whatever you have. You can see it's a dark gray color. Matches well though. Then what you don't see is me taking a little antiquing wax on my finger and going around the edges because I actually sanded that down to make it nice and smooth. Okay. Y'all, if I would have left everything in this video, this would have been an hour-long video, at least. Alright, so now I'm just prepping my decorations or my embellishments for these beautiful boots because she's fancy like that. You can put your trim wherever you want. I like this burlap polka dot ribbon, and I'm going to use it to go around the top part of the boot. So I'm going to give myself about an inch of an overlap there, and then I'm going to start going around. Now I'm only going to go... You'll see here how I'm going to make it actually fit the curve of the boot. I'm only going to go around the top with the glue until we get all the way around. So what you see me doing is just going around that top edge, or what you don't see me doing, either way, you can imagine. There we are. There it is. Okay, you're just going to keep going around like that, and then when you get it back to its original spot, press everything down and protect your fingers. I didn't do it this day, but I should have. 
and then look I'm gonna kind of make a little pleat here so that it goes up at an angle doing this is gonna make the bottom edge of that ribbon lay flat on the boot and to me it just looks more like it just looks better it looks um like it follows the shape of the boot as opposed to the boot beforehand if you don't do this little pleat or this little tuck or whatever you want to call this then you'll it will be standing away from the boot and that's okay too if you want it to look like it's kind of folded over but it kind of reminded me of a Santa boot and that's not the look I'm going for for our little witch here no all right look how cute these are so cute okay so now on this part I am going to put some of the beautiful purple flowers on it because purple and black is what I'm going for in this video and then I'm just gonna take another scrap you see how you can just stretch that and I'm just gonna ball it up and then stick it down in the top of each boot if you wanted to use your boots um, you want to leave them open you could put flowers in the top if you wanted to if you didn't want to put the flower on the side however you want to do it okay have you ever seen Poshmark you know how you have to set everything up and look so pretty and beautiful and I know people do it on Instagram too so maybe this witch is a designer and she wants to sell her boots her fancy handcrafted boots so she's got to make them look pretty so she's gonna put them on a platform and she's gonna stage those boots so that she will be the envy of town and everybody will want her designs press it down let it dry and then look at it look how those boots are posed Ugh! if you're liking these fancy boots please give me a thumbs up it helps my channel and it makes me love you even more okay let's take some of those spider rings that I cut the backs off of and we're gonna embellish with those I don't want to put a buckle back on this boot but I think the spiders look amazing amethyst spiders oh I love it all right so the next project is gonna be a witch hat we're gonna have her hat to match her boots so we're gonna go back to felt here grab you some felt I've laid my hat upside down on it and I am working on the back side of the frame again leaving the tinsel on it gives it a little more body and you're not gonna see any of that afterwards so I'm just gonna cut where I need and I'm gonna twist around where I need to twist around I'm gonna cut little darts there in the side so that I can wrap around the little edges of the brim of the hat because they have a little curve I want them to keep that curve so I'm gonna get them out of the way and then I'll fix it make it look a little bit better in a little bit but for this part we're just gonna start working on the tall part of the hat I'm gonna add some hot glue on the frame and then just pull it over you can glue and trim as you go you do not have to cover this entire back but I'm gonna show you how you can do it if you want it to look nice and neat because you can leave the this actual wreath like this or you can do the second step which I will show you in just a minute so be sure you stay tuned so you can see what else you can do to give it a little more dimension okay so you just want to finish this back off and like I said before a couple of times you can pull on this felt and it's a little stretchy it has a little give so continuing around I'm gonna trim off what I don't need just a little on that X on that side that's extra that's just getting in the way and what's on this side I'm just gonna kind of roll under it gives it a little more thickness and I like that then I can just roll it instead of cutting it and go right over to the edge that we've already glued down and it's see how it's nice and flat on the back I like that and by the way I don't mind that the little bumps are showing um, those little bumped areas on the sides are where the tinsel is attached down to the frame that's how they make these wreaths at Dollar Tree so again trimming off I don't want anything too bulky on the end because I want to keep the taper on the end of the hat that's one thing that I think is so cute in a witch's hat is that point and since this one has a curve in it I want to make sure that the the little curve is a natural nice taper going downward not with a big gap in the middle but if it does happen to you I'm gonna show you how to fix that as well so we're gonna keep going down here now everything is fixed on the back part of it and we're gonna work on the curved part of the hat I am just going to pinch it 
and then glue it down. I'm going to pinch it and roll it and then glue it down until you get a nice point on it. I wanted to leave this in here so you could see exactly how to do this because in some of the last parts of what we're making, uh, embellishing this, it's really important that we have a nice crisp point on the end. So keep watching so you can see what to do. Okay, this is it so far. You see I got my little points right, same way I did on the top of the hat is how I did the little ones on the bottom. But you see on the top it has a little gap. We're going to fix that. So I'm pulling a thicker piece of this. So you're probably going to need two rolls of felt. Yeah, you're going to need two rolls. I think I just said a roll, but go ahead and grab two. And then I'm going to start twisting this like I did on the boots. I'm going to glue it on the back side on the bottom and then just start working my way around because we're not we're going to put something on the bottom of this hat. You're not going to see where it starts the fold. So I'm going to begin to twist and I am going to leave some wrinkles and dimples in the fabric as I go along. This is the part where I'm saying you could you could leave it and not wrap this part on there or for additional interest, I would think for me. Um, you're just going to go ahead and wrap another piece on top of it. You're going to squeeze it. You're going to flip it. You're going to leave some wrinkles in it. You're going to make some little gathers. You see here how there's little areas that are kind of gathered and you're going to make sure that if you do a like a pleat or a gather that you do most of it to the right side because you're going to be curving to the right. So we're going to keep going to the right. Flip it up and you want it to get more and more narrow as you go toward the top. See, I'm going to continue here. I'm going to go around, grab a little pleat. There, I've pleated it again and continue around. But you see, the tip looks weird on my hat. There's a gap between the end of the wreath body that's under there and then the additional length that I added by putting on the felt to the end of it because I wanted it to be a little bit longer. We're going to fix that. You can either fix it at this point, which I did not do. Um, I don't know what I was thinking when I did this part of it, but I couldn't quite get the angle right. So I went ahead and glued it down. And then I'm going to take another piece of fabric. Now this one, the piece of fabric that I'm going to use next is a square that I cut and then I folded the square in half to make it look like a triangle. So it's a doubled triangle. Okay. So that's what you're looking at here. I'm going to put it underneath and then kind of sandwich it or wrap it around. Now I'm gluing it on the back side, not on the front. Remember we want it nice and neat on the front. Put all of your hard work on the back. In just a minute, you'll get to see what that looks like. Now we're going to do a little swag or some decoration for the front or the brim of that beautiful witch's hat that we have created. I've got thrifted and Dollar Tree pieces. Look at these beautiful purple leaves from Dollar Tree. Now on my camera, from my angle, it looks like it's coming off the flowers and the greenery is a little on the bluish side, but they're beautiful purple. So these are thrifted, these little pieces of, I believe that's eucalyptus, maybe. They're thrifted, but you can get something glittery, glittery, glittery or similar to it, you know, at Dollar Tree. Whatever you choose to put here. Here's the beautiful purple flowers and this kind of a two-tone purple flower. I love that it has the little cone in the center of it. It just, I don't know, it just looks witchy to me. Look at this. This is called Farmhouse Witch Hazel. I was able to find out of 12 stores, about three picks in different colors. But isn't it gorgeous in this arrangement? I also used some on a pumpkin that I did recently for fall. That turned out really pretty. So I'm gonna take a zip tie or you can use a pipe cleaner, whatever you have here. Zip tie is going to hold it nice and tight and it makes it easy so you don't have to keep picking it up and putting it down. You're going to cinch it all the way to in the middle, clip off the excess. And then I'm just kind of, you know, fluffing. I fluff my arrangements like I fluff my bows here. 
And then I have these little, they look like little, I don't know, like a little berry. I don't know what these are. But again, they look kind of spiky and they look kind of witchy to me, so I thought they were nice in here. And I think it's going to fit nice right across the bottom. So now we're going to work on the ribbon. And the ribbon is purple, although it looks kind of blue. That velvet ribbon comes in a three foot roll, so I went ahead and cut each of these two into three foot pieces as well. And then I'm just going to cinch it up. These are all wired in the middle. And don't worry if you didn't catch that, I'm going to let you see on the other two strips of ribbon exactly what I do again. I'm just going to clip that off. Then I'm going to take another piece, and this one's going to be in the center, cross it over itself, pinch it up in the middle. This is really good quality um, for a Dollar Tree ribbon, really, really good quality. I'm going to take the next one, and it's sheer with spider webs, and the other one is black with white spider webs. I'm going to pinch that one up in the middle too. And grab up the rest of my ribbon. Just stack them all on top of each other. And these are all roughly the same size. Now using my pipe cleaner, I'm going to twist it around the middle. I'm going to use a pipe cleaner this time because I'm going to need something to attach this down to the little swag that we made. And I'm going to do it very tightly because I have to flip this bow. So I am pushing down and twisting over the little chenille stem. I'm going to trim up a little bit on these edges or the ends of the ribbon. To me, this is an important part of making your bows and I'm not going to do it fast. I'm going to show you what it looks like, that it does take me some time to do things to. I don't have superpowers. Well, through the power of editing, I have superpowers, superpowers, but I don't have any personally. So you're going to trim this off. You could also do a dovetail if you like the way that that looks. And I'm going to just continue to move my ribbons around and move my bow pieces around so that I can fluff it out and make it look beautiful. Now they're all about the same length and that's a good working length because once you get it down then you can trim it up if you want to trim it up more. There I am fluffing. Love my fluffing. And you can move those now. You've got them very tightly into that pipe cleaner. You can move them in any angle you like. To attach it down, I'm just going to flip my little greenery swag over on top of the back of my bow, and I'm going to tightly twist them together. You can leave it on or you can cut it off. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. And then I'm going to prepare to put it down. Look how pretty this is. I love it. So as I was fluffing, I noticed that for the size of my hat, I had a little too much going on down here. Just too much length in the ribbon. So I decided to cut a couple of pieces to look more like little flyaways. And make it a little more... Hmm, I don't know. To make the size a little bit better, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm now I'm going to take a little piece of, uh, this is like a cotton cord, and I have it threaded through an upholstery needle. I'm going to go through the back of the hat over the, as part of the plastic edge of it, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to go through the back of my arrangement, right up through the middle, and then go underneath it. And then you can wrap it a few times if you want to, but mine held into place fine right here. And then I'm just going to tie this off in the back with a couple of knots to hold it in place. When you flip it back over, if you need a little more support, and it wouldn't be surprising with a bow that size to need more support, just add some hot glue and then press it into place and hold it there for a minute. Give it a little time to, to dry and then you'll be good to go. Then you can do all of that extra little fluffing that you like to do. All right, so I'm gonna make something for the top. Now you see the taper is perfect. It's exactly how I wanted it. I'm going to start making a little, it's like a little, 
I don't know what you would call this. It's like a little mini, mini greenery piece, I guess. I'm going to use some black leaves and one of my purple leaves. One of these beautiful witch hazels with the little curl on it. And then I'm going to glue a little berry in the middle with a piece of wire. I'm going to glue it right to the tip. Let that dry and then I'm going to glue it down on the leaf so that there's a little gap in between. And look, y'all, once the glue cools, of course, look at this. It can move! I forgot to show you, but I did actually put a spider on there that you will see in the end screen of the video. So be sure that you stay to the very end. To hang this, I'm just going to use another piece of my pipe cleaners. And I'm just going to glue it right down on the back of that. And then you can hang it up from there once it's cool. Last project is a spider dish. So we got this little tray at Dollar Tree. It's the spider. And then a glass bowl from Dollar Tree. Now take your tags off, wash the bowl nicely. Get it nice and clean and dry it off. I'm going to use a little foam block and some felt and these little rings greenery that we had left from the other projects i'm going to start off with some electrical tape going about eh, an inch and a half down i am going to tape this off i had seen in another video that somebody likes to use electrical tape doing uh, curved projects so i thought i'd give it a try and i have to tell you i am very happy with the results as you'll see here shortly so i'm going to tape this off I'm going to tape it off because we're going to be coloring part of this bowl. All right? So on the bottom of the bowl, I like the way it went down. It looks nice, but you can always move it around if you don't get the right angle. Got a little too much glue, but I do take some of that off. I am going to take some Mod Podge and go all the way around. This is going to help our it's going to help the paint stick down on this glass and it's gonna keep it from bleeding. So you can go a little bit over your tape with your Mod Podge. I just scraped off when I had too much Mod Podge and put it back in the bottle. Yeah, see, we don't wanna waste anything, do we? Once it is good and dry, it looks almost clear. Then I'm gonna take some black paint. It says metallic, but it really does not look metallic to me, so I don't know what that's about. And I'm going to put it all over this the same area that we put down the Mod Podge that's where we're gonna put it on here all the way down and if it gets on the tape that's okay too still gonna give you a nice good line so it's gonna take three coats and I'm drying it in between with my little Arteza heat gun but you can use a blow dryer if you don't have one I'm gonna cut down a piece just big enough for my tray and then I'm gonna wrap it with a scrap of felt and it fits nicely here. I'm gonna trim off the excess. Gonna use some hot glue. Might be better off on cool temp because you know, styrofoam and, and glue, it can melt and make a big mess. And then squeeze it down, trim off what you need to trim off, and then it's gonna be great for right here because we want something that's gonna lift it up to almost the same level as the sides of that little tray that we're putting it on. So I'm gonna use some glue and put it right in the center and press it down into place. Then I'm gonna use my little insulator to hold it down. And then once it's dry, and yes, it is all dry, we can peel off the tape. Ta-da! Look how nice that is. And I'm gonna show you why we want the bottom of the bowl to be black. So you see where it sits here. See that? We do not, we're going to be putting florals in there, and I don't want to see a bunch of flower picks under there. So now that this is painted black, you won't see this at all. I'm going to use hot glue here, more hot glue. And then attach this down. Now, we're going to be using this as a candy bowl. Quite obviously, this is not something that you can wash, put in the dishwasher and all that. This would be like one of those one-time use things if you're going to put food in it. Otherwise, you could just use it for a candle or something like that. 
So I press the bowl into place and then I just put a weight in that to let it dry while we work on some of my greenery. So I cut these greenery picks down from, they were like triples, and I cut them down so they would be individual leaves so it would stretch out the amount of little black leaves and coloring we will have in our arrangement that's going to go around it. So I'm just using some spare picks I had left over and I'm just going to glue them on the back. Now we have individual little black leaves. Perfect. Now you didn't see me put down the purple, but I stuck the purples in there. I had three of those left. Now I'm just going to go around and add here and there with some of these black leaves. The felt, when you put it on your styrofoam block, be sure that you stretch it when you put it down so that you, can, you don't want to be able to see through it, but you want to stretch it enough that you can easily poke your, um, your stems through it. So whether you have a wire stem or a wood pick that you decide you want to use, because you, you could use toothpicks and stuff if you wanted. You want it to be able to perforate your um, fabric that's over there. Okay, so then I cut my big eucalyptus picks apart that I had left over, and I'm just using those in little single, little single uses here and there so that I can stretch it out, you know, so I get a, a balanced look all the way around. And y'all, this is, this is what I do, which I did not edit out. I will put things down. I will bend things. Sometimes they bend and they don't want to go in the first time. You just keep working with it. I'll put something in place and I don't like it, so I move it and put something else there. You see, I'm struggling here. It's because I didn't stretch it out far enough. Yeah, I didn't stretch my fabric enough. So now I've got my same coloring and the same greenery that I have in my witch's hat and in the witch's boots, which makes it perfect. Plus, the witch's hat has a little spider on it, as you will see shortly. So everything is nicely coordinated and this would be so cute for Halloween decorations or a Halloween party or, you know, you could use it at the office for a little Halloween get together. You could give any of these as gifts because they are so cute. And who doesn't love a, a sweet little happy witch? A good witch, right? So I'm continuing in, to turn it. I will turn it in all angles and look at it and make sure that I have it covered. And you can't see any of the picks underneath the painted part of the bowl, can you? Perfect. And we're putting enough greenery in here that we are not seeing the base either and you can't see the foam. So I'm just gonna add the little berries and the witch hazel and whatever else we need all in there. And then see, I have some of these witches left. I'm gonna, not witches, <laughs> spiders and I'm gonna put those on there. So maybe this is a mama spider and she's got her babies with her and they're all hanging out at the, at the Halloween party. Okay, so I'm just going to see where I wanna put them and put them down. I only had two left out of this whole pack. And then I'll add another one over here on this side. Look how cute! Oh my gosh! I mean, for as cute as a spider can possibly be, this is really cute for a happy witch decoration, don't you think? I think so. All right, so let's see what it looks like with some candy in it. Gotta have candy corn and worms and more candy corn and worms and more candy corn. Isn't this nice? This is cute. I like this and my kids love being able to snack on the treats after I did my final reveal. So these are the projects that we have. I went ahead and left the old, or the original witch's hat in there so you can make a comparison. Here is our cute little candy tray and I just put some lights under it. Lighting makes a big difference and when you're doing holiday decor, lighting really, really helps. It really makes an impact. Here are the little boots. Now, if it bothers you that you have a little extra hot glue in places like you can see on the toe of this boot, just go back over it with a permanent marker or some black flat paint and you won't be able to notice it. It'll just blend right on in there together. Here's our hat and let me show you what this looks like. This is so cute. Look, it looks like the spider is suspended from there. I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. I know you can. 
and these are easy to find materials to do them with. Project number one is a black cat sign. We are going to be using Dollar Tree items. We're going to start off with this little sign that I found. These are thrifted. But you can see the prices, maybe you can see where it comes from. There are two of these and I'm going to use one on each project. I'm just going to start off with some black chalkboard paint and put that down and then go over all of that writing. I tried to erase that off of there and it won't come off, so it must have been permanent. Easy to fix. Alright, so we're going to take this sign apart because we're going to use this one sign for two different projects. Just pull the ribbon off the back. If you pull carefully, it'll loosen up those staples. You can take those right out and throw them into the trash. Save your ribbon. We'll use it again. And then you can save your little pumpkin. We're going to use this yard pick. And it is a black cat with a witch hat. Love it. And I'm just, just going to turn it over and then press down and pull the stake off. You can save the stake because you can use it on other projects and we will be doing that in another video. This is a thrifted headband that I found. Looks like a little girl's headband and it very easily will pull right off the backing. And I love these. This, um, this little florette shape or whatever you want to call it, pinwheel, is perfect for vintage DIYs. And I like the colors. Cute. All right, so for the first project, we're going to use the oval sign. And I'm gonna just see how I want this to look. I've moved these around a little bit. I'm sparing you because the video can be quite long if I show you all of it. But you can kind of play around with it and see how you would like for your layout to be. Since the center of this sign is depressed, um, I'm going to use these little tower blocks, tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I use them on a lot of projects for the same thing, just as like little risers or spacers. I'm going to put it on the back and use it to hold it up off of the sign. I love using signs that have some depth in them because it gives a lot of shadows, it gives a lot of dimension, it gives interest, and it also allows you the space to add in lights if you choose to do that or add picks or anything else that you want to use. So before I glue them down to the backing, I just want to go ahead and get their little these little pieces on here, their supports, if you will, so that I can place them down. And I do like the way that this looks, and this is going to fit nicely. So in order to mark my space where I don't forget where I'm gluing, where I need to put the glue, I'm just going to use some more of these box, and I'm going to go right in between with my glue. Now, if you have a flat oval uh, sign, which you can get similar to that, you know, at Dollar Tree, if you have something flat, you don't have to worry about using the Jenga blocks to raise anything up unless you just want to. And that would give you some dimension there as well. Then you can add everything in how you like it. I'm just kind of making sure that the top and bottom sign have about the same amount of space, but you could use your blocks there too as little spacers. And then the same thing with the cat. I don't want a bunch of extra glue all over the place because sometimes when you peel the glue off of a painted surface, it'll take your paint off. So I don't want that to happen. And so doing it this way is gonna help me a little kind of gauge where I need the glue and where I most definitely do not need the glue. Now this little cat is gonna overlap slightly onto the spooky sign, which I do not mind. I like it. We're gonna go with it. It's all layered and pretty. And then on the top where the hole is, I'm just gonna add one of these little pinwheels or rosettes, whatever you wanna call them, right to the top. It has a little rhinestone in the middle. So over here on this spider, I'm going to use a white paint pen and cover up all of the legs. You could cover your entire spider if you wanted to. And I'm going to put down a spider ring that came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut the ring part off. You can see it over there to the right. And it will be perfectly ready. I love it! Isn't that so much better? Again, that's going to give it some more interest, some more dimension. And the sparkle from the little orange stone is kind of carried over from the sparkle and the rhinestone. 
Yes, you could stop right here if you would like. But I'm gonna add a little extra something to my sign. So I'm gonna show you how you can add some extra. I'm just using some scrap ribbons that I have. Some are wired, some are not. And I am going to make a little bow to go on the top. And so I've decided that yes, this is gonna be the right length. That's kind of what I was doing, trying to decide about the lengths. You can dovetail your ends on your ribbons. And then the thinner ribbons, I usually just cut at a slant. And you'll see that here. I'm just going at a slant to put those down. I'm gonna add this piece, which I just cut in half because it was a little bit bigger than the other ones, and dovetail that. Use any colors that you like. They can match or clash or complement or whatever you like. Just do what you like. Remember the floppy bows need to go on top or the floppy pieces need to go on top so that there's some structure from below, which are the pieces that have the wire. That makes sense, kind of holds it up. And then we're gonna use that same piece of black ribbon we already had that we took off of our sign and we're just going to tie these right in the middle. A couple of knots right in the center and you can take your time with this. You don't have to get in a hurry. When they flip over, don't worry, you can push them right back down like I do. A couple of double knots, triple knot, whatever you're comfortable with. And then you can cut it a little long so that that black piece will be now part of your bow. I love these types of bows in fall and Halloween decor. I just think that they're really pretty and they're festive. Okay, so you could put this on the side of the cat or you could put it in the center and just kind of tuck it around your sign pieces. And that's what I decided to do. You can use a clamp to hold it in place while you move on to another part of your project. You know you want to be efficient with your crafting so you can get it all done. We all don't have a lot of time to craft all day, do we? This is my job and that's why I can sit here and do it. But for those of you who have jobs outside of your home or you have children or you're taking care of your elderly parents or you have you know, disabilities of any type, you need to kind of get it done a little bit quicker, a little more efficiently. So you can see here what I've done. I'm just trying to kind of make this almost look like a little feather or embellishment on the side. We're just using like the tails. We're not actually putting a bow here. I've just made a V in the center and then overlapped it and glued it down to itself. You can see on this little orange ribbon. And I'm gonna put it down just like this. I love the little pizzazz it gives. And then I thought, hey, let's just go ahead and use a little scrap and cut this in like a V. So I have a V in this little piece and I'm gonna put it right on top. And that looks really cute. I like that. It's a very, it's a different kind of layered look, but it's cute. Then you can fluff around. You can tuck your bow ends under, you can curl them over, you can wrap, you know, kind of bend them around your fingers so they have a little bit of a curl in it. And at this point, it's a good time to trim up anything that you see that you would like to be trimmed. My little ribbon was fraying just a little bit, so I just went ahead, trimmed it up, make it look nice and neat. And then those um, other pieces, you can trim those down. It's best to start off with the same length and then you can just change it up. You can trim it, but you can't add it back, can you? Very nice. That's our first project. The next project is going to be a witch sign. So we're gonna take this other one and paint it, of course. And then we're gonna take a variety of ribbons and some rickrack. One of these is a sticker, but I'm gonna use it as a ribbon. I'm going to measure around the outside of that little border, cut it so it's easier to work with, and then I'm going to prop it up I have it leaning on a ribbon spool and the candles in front of it are kind of holding it in place where it doesn't scoot around. This gets it up where I can see it a little bit better and where you can see it a little better. It's closer to the camera. So I'm just going to add a little dot of glue, of glue and you might want to use your cool temperature here because you're going to be touching this a lot or protect your fingers, whichever way you want to do it. And I'm going to add just little dots of glue here and there or little very thin lines. I was having some issues with my other glue gun and then I ran out of glue sticks. So I'm using a bigger gun right now and I'm trying to get used to the flow. 
Then you're just going to tap it down. It doesn't take a lot to hold this little rickrack on there, but doesn't it make a pretty little detail? And then we're going to go around the corners. Once you get it all the way around, just kind of go around the corner. That's uh, another lovely part of having a trim like that. It just easily folds over. Clean up your glue if you get any on there. And then continue all the way back over until you get to that corner. You can see I'm trying to be very light with that glue. But if any of it does come off, you can just pick it off once it's cool. Trim your corner down, get it nice and neat. Then I decided to take the black and go over the edges of the sign. Right where it's kind of looking, um, where the gray and orange kind of blend together, I decided to overlap it there. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna go kind of over and off the edge. Makes it look a little bit bigger than it actually is. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. Very easy, just a little bit of glue, just like the one, the orange one that we did. And then we can trim off where we need to trim off. And it's so much easier to do. If you just turn it over on the back and just follow the curves that are there, it makes it so much easier. And then we're gonna do the sides last. It will overlap and make it look finished. You can use an orange paint pen or marker or whatever you want. If you have any little areas that aren't covered, you can just go ahead and cover up that gray with your orange. On the top too, I'm just trying to fill in those little spots to make it kind of blend together a little bit better. Then we're gonna go back to those same little tower blocks and I'm going to use six of these. It doesn't take this much to hold it up, but we're gonna use this for supports for lights. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm gonna go down, leave a little space, and now it is higher than the surrounding place and it gives us a nice little area for lights. With that said, you're gonna take a crafting knife and you need to drill a little hole, or you can use a screw, or you can use whatever you drill holes with. You can use a drill. But in case you don't have a drill, you can use a knife. Feed your lights up through here. These, I am pretty sure I got these from Dollar Tree. Pull it all the way through. Then you can take some mounting tape, and mine did come from Dollar Tree. This is very good sticky stuff. Put it on the battery pack, and then you can just stick it down. It can be upside down, it can be the right, right side up, whichever way you want to do it. Then we're going to go ahead and glue this down on top of the other sign. You don't want to glue down your lights there, so just make sure you're not sitting it down on the lights. That's what I'm doing, making sure that it's between my little supports here. And then you're just going to run those lights. Once the glue is dry, you're going to run the lights around the outside. You don't have to do this tightly, but just tight enough that it you know, the light strand is kind of hidden behind your sign there. And you can use some of that, some more of that mounting tape. I was down to the last little bit. I had a little tiny piece left to stick on the end of those lights and then just stick those down to the surface underneath or to the top of the sign. I'm really not sure where it stuck down, but it stayed there. And then when you turn it on, it's gonna look like this. It is not a super bright sign. It is not intended to be, but this is what it looks like when the lights are slightly dimmed. And if you like your sign like this, you can leave it just like this. Or you could embellish it with that little pumpkin. You could spray paint it, you can paint it, you can decoupage it, you can put it anywhere you want to on your sign if you would like. Can see any way that you wanna do it or you can do something a little extra special. This is a bonus. Look at this little skeleton. It came from Dollar Tree. These are a collection of cupcake cups that I've had forever in my pantry. A little bit of lace trim, a variety of ribbons, lots of hot glue. We're gonna make some clothes, so check this out. You're gonna run your fingers around the edge of your cupcake paper. Just get three ones that you like that coordinate and then fold it over. And then you're gonna cut just a little notch out, just a little one now, because it just needs to be big enough to slide over this little witch. It's gonna go 
just like we're getting her dressed in the morning. She has no zippers, so we're going to make sure that it will go above that pelvis and go right up there. All right, so now we know that's how we want the skirt to be. I'm going to go around and do the same thing with the beautiful candy corn. Flatten it all out, fold it over, cut just a little notch out right there. So there's another layer of her skirt, and then we're going to take the orange, and we're going to do the same thing. You don't have to completely press out the little um, ridges there. You don't have to completely press those out, because that will give some interest in the skirt. Then you're going to trim just a little off, because we want each of these layers to be kind of stacked. So we have, we'll have the black on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to trim this one down, too. We want to make sure that each layer is a little bit longer than the other one, or each layer is a little bit shorter than the other one, because when you stack it, you want to be able to see each color. So the black is the biggest, and then the orange, and then the candy corn. So see there? That's how it's going to line up. A tiny bit of glue here just to hold our pieces together to make it easier when we put this back on our little skeleton. Just a few little dots. And then press that down together. All right, now she needs a little hat. So we're going to make a hat now. I'm going to use the black for this. I'm going to press it out. Fold it again, just like we did before, but this time we're not going to cut anything. And once we get it into that position, we're going to fold it over once more. And it's going to look almost like a little dunce cap. Isn't that cute? Use a little hot glue to glue your edges down. Just make sure that it's going to fit on her. Then I'm going to cut one of the scraps and make a little band for the hat. So I'm cutting that off. I'm going to go right around here with a little bit of hot glue. And now her little hat is going to match her skirt. And y'all don't worry, she won't be topless. We're gonna give her a top too. Okay, her hat is perfect. You could put a little, any other type of embellishment on there that you wanted to. And we're gonna put her skirt back on. You see her arms are very rigid. They're, they don't bend. She doesn't have working elbows. So close your eyes if you don't wanna see this. We're doing an amputation. But don't worry, we'll give her her arms back. She'll get them back. I'll tell you when you can look. Don't look yet. Don't look. Oh, okay, good. All right, we're good. We're good. She's not in any pain. She's still smiling. Okay, so we are going to take that skirt, now that we can get to it better, and just fold it over as wide as you want the skirt to be. You can leave it completely in a full sweeping circle there, or you can give it a dart in the back and make it just a little bit smaller. And that's what I decided to do. Just gonna put some hot glue right in there. I'm not concerned that it doesn't line up in the back because you can trim that off and she's gonna be sitting on the skirt, so no worries. She needs a petticoat or a slip. So let's trim this down just big enough that we can glue a piece right on her pelvis. And that is going to give her a nice little cover and a little cute little unexpected detail. I had way too much fun making this little, this cute little girl. All right, now I'm going to add some of that, it's like a velvet type of trim. I got it at the thrift store, but I know that you can get something similar like in a satin at Dollar Tree, or I have seen it in my stores anyway. There's her cute little hat. Here's her cute little skirt. And then I'm trying to find front and back here. We can put her arms back on. You just have to hold it for just a minute once you put the hot glue down in any position that you like. You could have her waving if you wanted to. But I want her to be very prim and proper and just have her hand sitting on her skirt in front of her. Now we're going to make her a cute little halter top. Trim off a piece. We're going to tuck it up underneath her arms. This was easy to do. This was not hard, although you see me fidgeting here. And then you can just trim it off and glue it in the back. So it makes just like a little, you know, 
little top around her. And then we're gonna make a halter by just gluing one end down on the left side. Gonna take it around her neck and then glue it on the right side. And then you can just trim it up so they're both even and she looks nice and neat. Okay, now we can take our little hat and put it on. Just takes a little hot glue on the front top part of her head since the hat is leaning backwards. That way it can grip onto the, the, uh, the paper there, the cupcake paper. So cute. Okay, don't look. I'm trimming the dress and then we're gonna be taking her legs off in a minute. Okay, don't look, don't look. I'll tell you when to look. Okay, you know bones don't have nerves anyway, so she didn't feel any of that. Okay, now you can look. So now we're gonna put her back on the sign and decide how we want her to sit here. If she is so precious, I love her. I think I want her to sit right at the top. And I'll put her in the top middle. I'm making sure that I have her positioned correctly and I'm gonna glue her legs down to the skirt. This is going to also glue her sort of into a sitting position. And conveniently, that sign that I use has like a lip on it, so she'll sit nicely right up there. But if you have a flat sign, just use one of those tower blocks, glue it to the top, and sit her right on top of that. I'm gonna hold her down for a minute to make sure she stays in place, and let's give her her legs back. Now, I'm going to glue these where it looks like she is sitting with her ankles crossed. Again, prim and proper, sweet little girl. After the glue is dry, go on to the next leg, and then when you put it on, put it on at an angle as well so that her ankles are crossed. And you can use a dot of glue um, between the ankles if you want to. Oh, she's so cute. Y'all, she's cute. I love her. I love her so much. Then she needs to hold something. So you can give her a pumpkin or you can give her a little figurine, like a little black cat, which is super cute too. But because this is kind of a vintage inspired video, I thought maybe we would do something with a little more pizzazz. So I'm just gonna put this little sparkly pom-pom. I'm gonna use one of these cupcake picks and just cut it off. And that came from Dollar Tree and then also a bat and we're going to make her a little scepter or a wand with the bat so i'm going to use my acrylic marker here and just cover that in orange going to add some hot glue and let her hold on to that so is she a witch is she a trick-or-treater is she a clown is she just a skeleton i think she is a trick-or-treating skeleton and she is precious look at her I love it. I hope y'all love her as much as I do, and I hope you'll try it. It's really not hard. The next project is a pumpkin wreath. I have done many pumpkin wreaths. I did one also for Halloween last year, and we're going to be doing it again this year. So a Dollar Tree wreath, we're going to take some signs, we're going to take florals, whatever type matches the fabric that you get from Dollar Tree. I also have a little thrifted sign. Here's the fabric that I chose because it looks vintage to me. It looks old. And we're gonna put it across the pumpkin. Just so you know, every piece of fabric that I've gotten from Dollar Tree fits on every pumpkin that I've gotten. So this must be the standard way that they cut the fabric, which makes it perfect for you because you can use it. So now the pumpkin is upside down. We're gonna get some clamps and our finger protectors and of course some hot glue. This is the way I like to do it. I like to start in one space, kind of fold it over, and clip it first. You don't want to be going along thinking everything's great and then you run out of fabric and you have too much in one area because then you have to patch and that is just no fun and you can't craft efficiently when that happens. So let's just save ourselves the trouble and just go around here and put the clips on first, right? We like those tips that help us get the job done. So we're just clipping it down. I am not pulling it super tight. I don't want to bend the frame. I just want to make sure that there are no wrinkles or lines going down the front. So I'm just going to continue, continue along. I'm clipping these down and into place. If you don't have these clips from Dollar Tree, you can use um, like the clothesline. 
wooden clips to hold it in place. I think those would probably work fine for you. After everything is clipped into place, you're just gonna flip it back over and you are going to use hot glue underneath all of those little sections. You can put your clips back on until the glue is dry. And then you're going to trim off all of your excess. Now for the top. This is going to be the little swag that goes on the top. There are a bunch of ways of doing this, but this is how I have discovered is both efficient and affordable. So I'll just use a thicker, like the stem from another floral and use it as a bottom piece, measure it across the top and you get about 10 inches. That will be the perfect size for these uh, pumpkin frames. So I've got some Dollar Tree leaves underneath and these are the little um, burlap ones underneath some thrifted black eucalyptus these fern pieces are from dollar tree the roses are thrifted but you can get them from dollar tree i mean don't typically use roses in my decor but it's the only black flowers i had so you know just kind of um decide what you like best um, dahlias would have been beautiful that would have been my choice but i'm trying to use what i have right now and uh because I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't need to just constantly buy and then not use your items. So I just try to make sure that I am keeping the center down when I add in my picks so that when I do clip these together, they'll all be in place. I'm gonna keep adding as you go along and I try to mimic or do opposite on the other side. So if I have, um, you can see what I'm doing here. I have the, um, Kind of see-through leaves on the bottom on the right and then on the left and then I have the solid ones on the top right and the bottom left you get what I'm saying so a black zip tie around the middle will hold these all together and I'm just trying to make sure nothing comes apart and then you can clip off that extra flip that little clippy part to the back and then you can add in whatever else you want to add in that has to be attached with glue I chose some random greenery that I had laying around and just put that on the back because you want to widen out the middle just a little bit now that you have the other pieces ready. I'm going to add some green in here because of the green fern that I have. You don't have to add the green. Um, nobody has to, to come for me about the green and the pumpkin stuff. You know, it's okay. I live in the south. We have green. We have green all year. So, um, go ahead and take that stem. We're going to add two pieces of cardboard and some glue in between so that we have a surface to put our little riser space. I'm going to use two little wooden blocks here. I think they came from Dollar Tree, but I'm not certain. Then you're going to glue those to the bottom. This is going to be the support that's going to hold up our swag. So put that right down on there. You can clamp this into place and let it hold. These are also clamps from Dollar Tree and these came from the laundry section. They will get the job done. Once everything is dried and your glue has set up, you can start adding in more pieces wherever you feel like you need them. I'm gonna put a rose in the center. And then I decided to use this little cutie pie. But I didn't want the little bows, so I tore those off. Keep adding in your little willow pieces. You want some, some I know as crafters we say depth and dimension all the time, but it's true. You want that. You want the things that look different. You want the things that look spooky if you're doing Halloween. You want it to look wild if you like, you know, cottagey or rustic. You want it to have interest, right? So you're going to keep adding these in where you need them. Add glue where you need it and just keep going around. I'm going to take another one of those burlap leaves, fold it over, and then put it right in the top, right on the top of there. It almost gives it like a stem. A little glue on the inside of it, a little glue on the paper, and it will dry. And I'm going to add some more of these. Love these. Uh, these I got thrifted, but I think Dollar Tree has these. Am I right? Am I wrong? Have y'all seen those at Dollar Tree? They're really pretty. Just continue along and make it as thick as you like it. I have had people say that they don't like as much as I put in there, and that's okay. That's why my channel is called Making It My Own. You're going to do exactly what you like. Even if you don't like what I like, you know, just do your own thing. I encourage you to do that. That's what I want you to do. You don't have to copy what I do. So going right over the, or the framework that's underneath, 
I've added a good bit of hot glue and then pressed down my cute little ghosts right there. Once it's dry, you can pick it up and move it around and look at it. Add, remove, whatever you feel like you want to do. Love them so much. Just to break up the black, I've decided to add a couple of more pieces of green in there. You can use um, little flowers here if you wanted. You can use whatever you want. You could use some of those little picks with the balls, little fluffy things, whatever you choose. So for a hanger, I'm just using half of a Chanel stem. I'm gonna put it right here, add a little bit of hot glue, and then a piece of scrap ribbon, and that is gonna hold it in place for you. Perfectly. Here are our beautiful projects. This is our cat sign. It's the most spooky time of the year. Love my cat sign. I do have two more picks, a skeleton and a pumpkin, so they're going to be in some projects coming up soon. Here is our pumpkin Dollar Tree wire delight. Our little wreath. I appreciate y'all so much for coming by and for watching my videos. The videos for Halloween have been very popular, and I am so happy that you're enjoying them give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it it lets me know to keep doing this kind of stuff again subscribe if you're enjoying it i promise to keep bringing you budget-friendly diys and share the video if there's anybody that you know who would also like this content so the first project is our cat sisters makeover I got this little thrifted wooden kitty cat duo. Very cute. It's got a little broken tail, but that's okay. This is a little pumpkin. It's just a little plastic pumpkin. I'm gonna have some black and orange paint. I do not use that orange paint, by the way. I decided to use this pumpkin paint instead in the chalk paint. Some paint brushes. Protect your surface for this because we're gonna be painting these kitties black, giving it a Halloween makeover. I'm just going to shake up my paint, put a little down here, and then start brushing it on. I like a flat brush because I feel like I can really get in all those little cracks and those little tight spaces. So since this has a hole in it, I'm just going to put a stick in the bottom to help me hold it while I am painting it. That way I won't get quite as much paint on my hands. I always, somehow or other, always end up with paint all over myself. I even found some on my arm the other day. No idea how it got there. So I'm just going to put this paint, I know you can't see, but I'm just going to put this paint all over. And since it's a little bit thicker, I'm just going to go up and down with the, uh, you know, the stripes of the pumpkin. After it's dry, I'm going to go back over the eyes with some jet black paint if it's easier for you go ahead and just use a permanent marker or an acrylic marker for this um, this would have been very difficult for me if i didn't have my magnifier glasses on ladies i'm almost 50 so yes i do use them and they are very helpful when crafting so you might want to get you a pair just to have when you're crafting so here are the kitties nice and dark I'm going to get a little bit of Mod Podge and put on the eyes of the largest kitty because his eyes are open. So I'm just going to paint right on the raised area. I'm not going to put it down in the space around it because we want his eyes to glow. So I'm going to add some glitter to the eyes. Well, it's a she. We're going to call it a she because these are going to be sisters. So here's some glitter. This is kind of a fine glitter and it's black and just I just reminded me of Halloween when I saw it just gonna dot some on and then shake it off and this is how it will look and then when it dries the um, you won't see the Mod Podge underneath so all you'll see is the beautiful color from that glitter we're gonna do the pumpkin like that as well I'm just taking a little brush using my pinky finger to steady my hand there and I'm gonna go all over the black area 
with this and the nose also and I just use my finger when I get out of the lines I just use my finger to wipe that off so you know it makes it easier you want to keep going don't get too frustrated when you craft it's, it's supposed to be something that is fun and that brings you joy and if it's getting annoying or aggravating or tedious you just need to get up and walk away for a little while maybe go out on the porch take a break and then come back in and get back to it so I'm sprinkling that on again and then tapping it off and this is how the little pumpkin is gonna look and I think it's it's cute love that glitter and I'm not generally a glitter kind of person but gotta have it during the holidays right all right so now I'm just gonna take a little bit of my antiquing wax and go over the little stem area here I didn't want to do green so I'm just gonna try to darken it just a little and then using a, um, a paper towel I'm just gonna kind of dot some of it back off now I'm gonna put a little embellishment around the kitty's neck and I have a little bit left of my orange rickrack I'm almost out and I'm so sad because I've got so many more crafts I want to do with it hopefully I can find some more when I'm thrifting and I'm just gonna wrap these two around together I'm not trying to make them look like they are um, connected and you may think with it wrapped this way that it'll look like that but we're gonna do something to definitely show that it is two different pieces I wish you could see more of the detail on these cats it's just really hard with the color of the paint and my lighting in the basement to really show the detail all right so this is some old velvety ribbon I'm going to cut it into pieces and make some little bows so that each kitty cat has their own bow and this will make it kind of look like that's not one piece you know like it's a little collar or a little necklace but it's not just one piece that it's actually two individual little collars so it's a simple bow that I do on lots of things I think everybody knows how to make this bow and again I'll show you how to do it again easy peasy and then pulling on the the um, the parts that hang down is going to give you how long or short your little strings are going to be or the tails are going to be and you can adjust your loops of your bow by just pulling on those so I'm going to make them small and the one that goes on the little littler the smaller kitten is going to be just a little bit smaller and I'm going to do it off slightly to the side now see doesn't that look like two different ones I have these cute little pom-poms and I'm gonna add those to each of the kitties little collars it's not quite the color orange it's more of a apricot or peachy color but I think it works I think it'll be okay aren't they sweet okay so now we want to give them a pumpkin I'm just going to um, put this down and see where it's gonna fit the best because there are some dips and depressions in the little statue so I want to make sure that the pumpkin kind of nestles in there so that's what I'm doing I'm looking to see if there's enough area that's touching the two items together so that the glue will hold them and it won't fall apart and I have more area over here on this side so this is where I'm gonna put it and you can see that I've marked it a little bit with the chalk paint from the pumpkin that was totally accidental but it worked perfectly so I knew where to put my glue and I'll stand it up so that I make sure that everything is flat when it's displayed and this is how the kitties will look aren't they sweet I love them you can follow me on my social media the next project is a cat boo shelf sitter okay I'm gonna have some jet black paint some orange paint some red paint this cat that came from the thrift store I have no idea if it's old or not this also came from the thrift store 
And then I got some crafting thick cardboard paper stuff. Um, foam board, if you will. I, I don't like the foam board. I'm going to tell you that I did it because I had already started and I didn't have another cat. But I do not recommend foam board for this project. Go ahead and just use regular poster board. All you really need is something that will give this cut out some strength and structure because he will be standing up in this project and yeah you don't want to you don't want to do this but you can see how i do it because you can use the same technique so i put my podge down first put the cat down and put more my podge on we're going to use a base also forgot to show it to you so there it was those signs come from the dollar tree and they're really good to use for projects I'm going to mix my own paint here by adding some orange and some red together and then a little bit of chalk paint. I am trying to get the orangey red that is around the outside of the cat. He's trimmed in that color, so I was trying my best to match that color. And I think I came pretty darn close, if I must say so myself. So I'm going to take one pumpkin and the bee and paint the front this orange color. I'm going to go all the way over and I gave them two coats each. I had some little clumps. You just see me digging them out with the paintbrush. Tell them my paint's getting old. But that's all you have to do if that happens. Just brush it out, wipe it off, keep on moving. No excuses to stop crafting people. We just keep going. We just power through it. Okay, so we're going to do the front of the B also. And I'm going to get on the inside of the letter B, but not the outside. And I'm also not going on the outside of the pumpkin with the orange. So the pumpkin that we didn't paint the front of, we're going to paint that outside orange. This will make sense to you soon. This looks like something that came from either Michael's or Hobby Lobby or maybe Joann's. So you might can find them there um, or something similar anyway. So you can do it the same way. All you want really is the word boo. And I'm going to go all the way around the edges with that. Then the first two that we painted, I'm going to take the black and very carefully go around the outside. I'm using a smaller brush here because I don't want the black to overlap onto my orange. So I'm just placing the brush down and kind of dragging it. There are some ridges in this MDF or whatever this stuff is that I'm painting on. So... I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing, obviously, but just take your time with it so you don't have any overlapping. Now, on the one that has the painted sides but not painted on the front, <laughs> I hope you're with me, y'all. You're going to use a piece of paper of your choice that's coordinating. This is very old paper that I've had forever, and you're going to turn your pumpkin over, trace it, and then cut it out. We're going to Mod Podge this down. I'm just going to use a brush here, a little foam brush, and just go all over the pumpkin to the edges with the Mod Podge. Not too much Mod Podge or you will get bubbles, the paper will get soaked and it'll make a mess. So just go sparingly, enough to stick it down but not have it swimming. And then I'm going to use my little squeegee here and just press it all down. Press it, press it, press it all the way down to the edges and push a little bit harder to the edges so that it really gets every bubble, every possible air bubble out of there. And then I'm going to take the, the brush and go back over it on the top to lock it in and then we will let that dry. So the black paint that we used before, we're going to use it on here let it dry. In the meantime, I'm going to fight with the cat. So I'm um, using a crafting knife here and cutting it out. I'm going to cut the biggest pieces away from it first, all the bulky stuff. And then I will go back in and do all the fussy cutting. And I mean to tell you, I was fussing while I was cutting. This was a lot of work. But here she is in all of her glory. I'm going to use an emery board and I'm going to just file down where you can see the foam that's hanging out and looking rough. File down as much as I can carefully and then I'm going to take some black paint 
and I'm going to go over all of the white foam and board that is underneath. This is going to give it such a better edge and finish. It's just going to look so much better. You can see it's already starting to look better. I'm trying not to overlap it onto my red trim there or my orangey red trim. But you see that color. That's the color that I was trying to imitate. It looks pretty close to the B over there, I think. And be sure you protect your surfaces. So now we're going to go back to this one and work on it. I'm going to use my emery board and I'm going to file off my edges. This is going to make it nice and smooth and it is going to be perfect. You can use a sanding block, sanding paper, a finger sander, whatever you have for this. You see how bright that is? We're going to darken that up in just a minute. So I'm going to take some antiquing wax on a baby wipe and we're going to go over those orange, uh, the pumpkin and the letter all around the edges with this. This is going to give it kind of a that blurred out look, that old look. Um, you know, the, um, the point of the antiquing wax is to give it an antique look so it's going to age it and that's what I like and what I want for this vintage project because I think it looks very much like what's going on with the cat. I'm going to go around the B and do the same thing. Go all around my edges and also be sure to get like on the inside of the letter any place that it would be needing some extra shadow and interest. And they look so much better. And then I'm going to bring down that white color by just using that same wipe that I've already been using and just kind of go over it. And you can see it automatically darkens it up a little bit. And I like that. And then the same technique we're going to use on the edge of this one. Where we sheared it off, we're going to go over it and then go up as high as you would like on your projects. Keep on layering as much as you like. I always like to start off with the least amount and then I begin to, you know, get it a little bit darker, add some little spots and such so that I don't go overboard first off. Looks good. Shout out y'all. 18,000 subscriber giveaway right now. It's time to treat you. Read the instructions and be sure that you comment Black Cat in the comments for a chance to win a box of goodies. Okay, you can see here how I've glued the kitty down. I put a block behind his foot, colored it black, and glued it to the base. I took the bee and the two pumpkins and glued them down toward the back of this black base. And then up here on the top, you can see that I glued the kitty's hand right there on the bee. I'm going to flip it over here and show you. This is how it looks from the back. He's glued in place here. You can see where the letters are glued right along the back side here. Just to give you an idea of the spacing. And then his little paw is glued up here from the back. You can't even see it from the front, can you? Now, to embellish this little kitty cat, He's got three little dots on him that look like where he might be needing hinges. Kind of like the little hinges you see in the little cutouts that you can move their arms up and down. Has those little round things on them. So I decided to use these bronze little push pins or upholstery pins. Cut them off. Cut the little pokey part off. And then I'm going to use them over those shoulder and the leg. But this little spot on the back didn't make sense to me. So I'm just using a dark furniture repair marker to kind of add to that and pat it, kind of blend it in so it's not as noticeable. Then I'm going to use my Fix-All adhesive so I don't burn my fingers off trying to use the glue gun. I'm going to put a dot down and then I'm going to lay it on the top, press it down just a tad. And then up here on the shoulder, I'll do the same thing. I'm just kind of swirling off the tip of it so I don't get a string of it across my project. Then let it dry, and this is how it is going to look. Oh, she's a beaut. She's a beaut, Clark. She's a beaut. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time. Admission is free. Now we have a cat hanging sign. Another fun cat. 
I'm going to use some black spray paint, some little spider rings, a little strip of, I don't know what this is, but it's a ribbon that's got, looks like fur on it, and a thrifted cat head. And this is a wooden cat. So I'm going to spray paint, and then this is how she's going to look. I'm going to protect my fingers because we're going to be gluing this little furry looking fringe all over the border of this cat. I'm just going to go along the outside to do it. Adding some hot glue. You might want to have cool temperature glue here. Or protect all your fingertips because for some odd reason I like to put my fingers down that are not protected. I don't know why I do that. Okay, so now I'm going to continue around just adding the glue and then pulling and laying down this trim. It fits nicely on the edge of the sign, so this was actually a pretty quick process. Just making sure that I was careful not to burn myself. Now, every time y'all watch my videos, you're going to be watching me put the wrong finger down in the glue, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That's okay. When I watch, when I edit my videos, I wonder sometimes what in the world I was thinking. So I'm going to continue around and just add it and then pat it down in there. Look how cute she is. I cut the ring and the legs off the spiders and I'm going to add those to the center of the eye. And since the little cat eyes are kind of oval, I just put them at this angle instead of doing them straight up and down. So it matches the shape of the, the eye in general. Oh, I like that. That is cute. We had the purple rings and the orange, but I think the orange are just the perfect ones. I have some yarn from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use that as a cord. I thought it fitting because it's kind of fuzzy. And I'm going to tie double knots in each end to use as a hanger. Just sliding one knot on top of the other knot to make it bigger so we have a bigger surface area to apply the glue. And then right on the inside area of the ear where the head connects I'm just going to add some hot glue and press it down into there it's very fibrous so it really it uh, really clings to that quite well and then I can trim off the excess because we don't need that it'll make it look nice and neat now I'm gonna make a bow with pipe cleaners I've never done this before but I love the pattern and I wanted to use it so just check out how I do it this is gonna be so easy and I'll be doing this lots more so you see I made that little loop there, and then I just took the back leg and wrapped it around the middle. Let's do that again. We're going to make the little awareness shape, press it down in the middle. Now it looks like a bow, but it's still loose. See how it's loose? We're going to grab it, wrap that leg around the middle, and now we have a bow. I love it. I love that. I love it. I hope this is helpful to you and that you'll be able to do these little bows now too. So maybe if you're out of ribbon but you really have some pipe cleaners that are gorgeous, go ahead and use them. It gives really interesting look and texture to the project. We're going to put this bow down on the bottom, but you can put it wherever you want if you happen to be doing a project that is similar to this. I'm going to place one on top of the other. And it almost looks like a little four-leaf clover. You can just use your wire cutters to trim it instead of using scissors on ribbon. So you can adjust things just like with ribbon. Then I'm going to glue my little bow down there toward the bottom of the kitty. Oh, she's a little stinker. Look at that face. I hope you like this kitty cat sign. Now here are our projects. Our little sisters, how cute they are with their jack-o'-lantern. You can see that the Mod Podge is dry. All you see is the glitter. 
Here's our boo sign, which I would also love for you to share. I think it's pretty unique. It means so very much to me that you guys keep coming back to my channel to watch the crafts that I create. The first project is going to be a owl light box. I'm going to use the frame that I thrifted and this cup that I thrifted. Did you know that on the inside of these cups there's actually a plastic film with the pictures on it? Yes, so if you just crack the top you can pull that film right out. And now you have something you can use in your decor. So if you have a broken cup that's got a crack in it, you can always take the insert out and use it in your DIYs. I'm going to cut out the section that I would like to use. So it's going to be the moon and the owl section with just a bat on it, or maybe two bats. I'm going to trim it out carefully. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to be sure that I round it because it's actually kind of square on the bottom of the moon but I want to round that out so it looks better in my frame. Now once we've got the piece that we like, we can just put it down on the glass. Now this is one of those frames that has a glass in the front and the back, so there's no solid background. You're, it's almost going to look like it's floating in there. So I'm just going to use some double stick tape to put this down. You can also use some Mod Podge, but be sure that when you put the tape down or the Mod Podge, that you put it down on the opaque parts, right? If that makes sense, not on the clear sections because you don't want to see your tape in there. So if you put it behind the sections that are colored, then you won't necessarily see it. It'll kind of blend in. So you're just gonna press it down wherever you put your pieces until you get it in the right spot. And right here, I had a little, little section. I thought I could use just a little more tape so I'm sliding a little piece under there and it is sticking to my dry fingers. Craziness. All right, so this is what it's going to look like. Such a pretty little vintage picture. I love that. The little owl is precious. All right, I'm gonna put the frame on the back or the back glass on there. And this actually did not come with both pieces of glass. It only came with one. So I used an 8x10 from another frame and took it out. And it's like an older glass, so it's kind of frosty looking. Totally fine. It's clean. It's going to be fine. All right, so on the inside of that glass, I'm going to add some hot glue and some of this black paper shred. You can definitely get this type of shred at Dollar Tree. If you can't find black, you can use brown or whatever coordinates with your picture. I use hot glue here and I do suggest you use your finger protectors if you're going to do this just so you don't burn your fingers. Then cut off whatever is going to be in the way of putting your back frame down or your back glass. And then I'm going to take a string of lights that I have and I'm just going to squish them down and press them into that grass. Well, the shred very very pretty it's on a copper line so it is going to be a yellow light rather than a bright white light y'all please excuse my voice everybody in the house has been sick for a couple of weeks now and my voice is still weird it's kind of in and out and scratchy sounding and my throat gets kind of weird so bear with me i'm going to try my best to get this out for you okay so i'm going to use some hot glue here and I'm going to go all around the edges. You could use like a silicone, um, if you have like the um, silicone sealers like you use in the bathroom, that would be perfect here. And then you wouldn't have to worry about burning your fingers. But I'm just going to use this to seal in my edges. And I have a little gap in the bottom and you can see that I glued the line off to the side. And I'm just putting a couple of layers on here because I don't want this glass to slip out. It is actually above the frame. So I'm gonna use a little extra protection in the corners. I'm gonna use some hot glue and a little tab of paper. I've got it cut like in a triangle so you won't see it through the glass when you have it sitting up and ready to display. I don't wanna see that. So it kind of disappears. And we flip it over and turn on the lights. And isn't it cute? I love light up projects. I hope y'all are not tired of seeing those from me because they just look so magical 
And kids really love them too. And for the ones of us who are young at heart, we love them too. The next project is gonna be the Victorian Eek. Now the Eek I'm referring to is from Dollar Tree, as well as this little, it's like a little skeleton ornament, I guess. They come in a, a pack of several. Here's the Eek sign. It's been done a million ways and I have never done it, so I'm doing it for the first time here. You're gonna use any type of Victorian or vintage inspired paper that you like. Um, you can use scrapbook paper, you can use old greeting cards, you can use whatever you can find. And then Mod Podge, of course, and a little flat brush, which I love. And a piece of paper that happens to match the theme. So I'm going to start by using Mod Podge on my letters. And I'm just trying to get it right on the top right now. I don't need it on the sides because we're only applying that paper right on the front of the sign. So it's not necessary. Continue around till you have a nice even coat like this. And then we're going to flip the paper right on. This paper is really cool. It has a, uh, a friend of mine, Marsha, gave me a bunch of paper stacks. And this one has, in the middle of each of those pieces, it almost looks like a little skeleton face. So I thought it was perfect for Halloween. Not to mention it's kind of grungy looking, kind of old and Victorian, which is really cool. So I'm just going to make sure I have no bubbles, no gaps. I want everything nice and flat. I'm going to take my utility knife. I broke the other one. Stepped on it and broke it, so now I'm using a heavy duty one. I have no idea where it came from. And I am going to just start by trimming off the biggest excess pieces. We don't want to do all that little inside work until we get done with all the big stuff. And doing these outside pieces is fairly easy. You're going to go around your entire project and get them off. Then I'm going to use my little emery board here. You can use sandpaper, a sanding block, you can use a finger sander, whatever you have, and just get that down where it is, the paper is right up against your wording. Now I'm gonna take these pieces, which by the way, I found a big stack of these at the Goodwill bins. They are absolutely beautiful. And I knew when I saw them, I was gonna be using these for Halloween, and then I have some I'm gonna be using for Christmas, and I cannot wait. So I'm gonna make these look really old and distressed. They already look fairly distressed, but by peeling off the edges, you're really gonna make them look tattered and old, and I love that. This project just turned out so much better than I anticipated, so I'm so happy to share it with you, and I'm really, really hopeful that you will feel inspired to do something similar to this, and if you do, I would love it if you will email me your pictures. I've gotten several people who have given me their pictures of the projects that I've inspired them to make, and it is very exciting to see them. I'm loving your work. You are a very talented community of young and young at heart gentlemen and ladies, and I'm very happy to see that, that you're feeling inspired in this channel, and I love that. So now I'm going to take my antiquing wax and just a little bit of black and I'm gonna go around those edges. The edges, because they're frayed, are really going to allow that to cling to it. So the color is gonna to cling to it and look how old that looks. Yes, that's exactly the look that we want for this project. So I'm gonna go around to all of the pieces that I've torn off and I just chose a few that I thought would look good and that maybe looked a little more Halloween themed. And then you can just take your finger and you can just rub this. We want it to look grungy and just like it's been in a trunk forever or in an attic. You know, you get it. Now I'm going to take a little brush. This one came from Dollar Tree in a pack of three, I think. They work really well. I'm happy with them. Uh, just in case you're looking for some of these brushes. And I'm going to go around on the inside and around the edges of this entire word. This is going to add a little more shadow, a little more dimension. It's going to add more interest, and I just really love it. Very grungy, right? I can't think of a better word. Aged, old, distressed, grungy, yeah. Now is the fun part. We get to put these pieces down all over the place. These do not have to fit. You don't have to fussy cut them. Don't worry about that right now. That's not 
that's not our goal right now it is just to get those pieces on the page now you make sure everything's dry before you start mod podging anything down you know this project's going to take a little time because you've got to let your layers dry in between but if you're doing several projects like i do several projects at one sitting then you can just let the stuff that's painted set it aside and work on the next project if it's got glue that needs to be dried set it aside work on the next project Okay, so now, now you understand that part. Let's get all these pieces on here where we would like them. I'm just gonna go along and add these down wherever they just kind of make sense, where they kind of fit, where I feel like they're going to be seen pretty well, you know? And they don't have to be sitting up straight. They can be sideways. They can be, you know, overlapping one another. Think about if you've ever scrapbooked before. That's kind of the idea. You know, just put it in there and just jump journal it all down on this sign. I love, love Halloween and I love Halloween creations and I love bringing them to you and I'm going to be very sad when I stop doing Halloween projects because it's just so much fun to me. It's so magical and you know, just got that childlike whimsy. It's exciting. You know, the change of season is exciting and it just brings me a lot of joy to do this like I have a ton of ideas and I just don't want to stop doing it it's craziness isn't it but Christmas is fun as well and I have a lot of ideas to bring you for Christmas so I hope that if you are here for the Halloween that you will stay tuned for all of the Christmas okay so now everything's in place we're gonna Mod Podge it let it dry and I mean let it dry completely before this step this paper is going to be very stiff. All of the little pieces that are hanging over are going to be very stiff, which makes them easy to cut. I'm going to go around there and trim off all of the excess, which is the backs of the, the decorative pieces that you put on there, the little um, pictures that you put on there, and just twist them and bend them and tear them off. You know, it doesn't have to look perfect. Check this out. When it is dry, oh my goodness look at it it's leathery and old I love it okay so now I'm just taking some of that antiquing wax and I'm going to use the brush that had Mod Podge on it so I have a combination of Mod Podge and antiquing wax which makes no difference whatsoever you don't have to do it like this it's just the brush I had there so I decided to go with it you know some of crafting is an experiment I'm gonna use little blocks to help support this so it will stand up on its own the part that is going to be glued on, we do not cover with antiquing wax, just like the bottom of the ink is not covered with wax either. I'm gonna just use a little bit of, I'm kinda trying to put some, where well, you can really tell what the letters are. So I kinda divided the ink, and now I am kind of, kind of, I am sort of, you know, outlining some of the places. So see, no, no, they're stressing on the bottom of that because I want the glue to stick. So I'm using wood glue and some hot glue and putting two blocks side by side to make it stand up. Now let's add our beautiful little skeleton man. We're going to make him so happy and not scary. He's smiling anyway. He's not scary, is he? Nothing scary about a skeleton. We all have them inside of us, don't we? And that is not scary. All right, so we've removed his arm and we're going to place it at a different angle. Same thing on this side. He's going to have one arm that is out to his side like he's putting his arm around you and the other arm we are going to make him wave so i'm just going to reattach it at the shoulder now a lot of people are telling me that you can put these in boiling water and then you can dunk them into ice water and that's an idea if you want to do it that way but for me in crafting for you guys i want to do this as quickly as possible to give you the ideas so that you can use them for yourself now the feet are at the wrong angle for him to be standing up straight. So I'm just gonna take them off right above the ankle. Gosh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? This is not for the faint of heart. I'm gonna trim off the ankle <laughs> and I'm going to reassemble him just like we did his arms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the feet down on the bottom, see where he's gonna be standing so I can get an idea of where his arm's gonna be back there. Excuse the fuzziness of the camera right now. It was focusing on the top of the E rather than the feet, but I think you get the idea. 
you're going to add some glue here. You're also going to add a little bit of super glue so that nothing pops off. I did not do that, and I had to fix that later. But do it now. It's the best way. Best way. All right, now on the top of the feet or the ankle area, I'm going to add a little more hot glue and super glue. And then place his legs back down on the feet. And I'm just holding his little arm behind until that glue dries. Just like that. Now to keep him from popping off, because there is... You know, we got the antique wax on there. Glue might not work, so I'm gonna use a shallow staple and attach his arm. And look how cute! But he's not scary at all. The next project is going to be a trinket box. This little beauty came from Goodwill, the outlet. And I don't know what this was. Does anybody know? Uh, maybe a cigar box, maybe a candy box, maybe just a little jewelry box. But it did have a broken hinge. Nobody picked it up, so of course I grabbed it. That hinge doesn't bother me. I'm going to cover this with a little bit of satin black paint once it is dry. And I did one coat. I left it a little bit crazy looking intentionally because I want it to look aged. So you can see some of the gold is still peeking out. You can see here it's got a lot of raised areas, which is perfect for what we're going to do. I'm going to use some of this gold. And I am going to add some gold back into this box. Now, I like this brush. This is a stencil brush. This is not actually what it's intended for. But I'll tell you why I like to use it for this kind of project. It has stiff bristles. And it is precise enough that you can poke it down in those deeper areas without the bristles splaying out and paint going all over the place. So if that makes sense to you, if you've painted before, I think you know what I'm talking about. This makes it so much easier. A soft brush just does not do it for me in this type of a project. This is just more precise and I just, this is just the way to go for me. And hopefully that will be something that will help you too if you have a problem with little paint flecks all over the place or your paint squishing out everywhere. So now I'm gonna take a bigger brush and start brushing over here. Again, if you have seen me craft, you know when I am doing this type of distressing, or any type of distressing really, I like to start off very light, and then I build up to the point that I really like it. I have found this helpful because I don't have a ton of extra that I'm trying to wipe off or repaint to cover or whatever the matter might be. I don't like all of that. I don't like that kind of drama. I don't like that kind of busy work, so I just like to build up, and hopefully that will be something that will help you. All right, I'm going to go over my little hinge here, and we are going to make our own little, it's going to look like a lock, I guess, a little decorative piece after a while, no worries. Continuing along, I'm going to go over the little raised, ridged area here. I want to make those kind of goldish. The box would have been okay on its own maybe if you wanted to use it like that. But I'm really, I really wanted to do the black and gold for Halloween. The next Halloween video I have for you has got some silver and black. So I'm excited about that. I want the inside to be a little bit heavier on that top because that naturally wouldn't be as worn down as the outside right so that's why I'm giving this a little little more of a coating and I have this beautiful paper that we're going to use to line the bottom so I'm going to flip it over trace it and then I'm going to go toward the inside of the line so that it will be smaller and it will fit down on the inside so I'm always hopeful that I have a good fit when I cut these out and it generally works I'm going to add Mod Podge in the bottom and grab a foam brush and just get a nice even coat there is a little lip and some depressions down in there but it won't matter once the Mod Podge dries once everything's pressed down and it dries it's going to hold it down so that's going to be fine and this is a decorative piece anyway this is not something I'm going to be using every day okay so the fun part is now you can put whatever you want on the inside if you want to use this for a prop you can put anything you want in there if this was a witch's jewelry box she would want to have her bones in there and her wand in there right and her rings so this is a cupcake pick from Dollar Tree. It's a little bat. I'm just giving him a brushing of gold, just a dry brush, and then I'm going to add him on here. I cut him off, and look at that. 
He's cute there. Could also use one of those spider rings. That would be really pretty too. That's the great thing about crafting. You can do it your own way. And I always want you to do it your own way. Now, poison candle. I didn't know what else to name this one. It's poison on the napkin, right? So we're gonna use a flameless candle. This one is about mm, six, seven inches tall. The napkins from Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge. We're gonna use some of the shimmer mist, some gold paint. Okay, we're gonna start by taking our napkin, laying it out. We are going to tear the bottom corner because this is the easiest way to separate the layers in my opinion. So I'm just gonna tear that part. It's not the part we're gonna use, so it doesn't matter that it's torn. And I'm gonna trim off what I need. I've already laid the candle down. I know how tall it basically needs to be. And I'm gonna trim off the black edges, but I'm gonna leave the bottom edge black. So, I love this napkin. They did a really good job on this one. There's a really pretty spider one too that I saw in some people's videos, but I can't find that one at my store. So, this is what I'm going to use. I'm gonna trim this off so that I don't have a big overlap, but I do want it to overlap a tad. So I could have had two bottles and one raven, or two ravens and one bottle. Whichever way you want to do yours is totally fine. I'm going with the poison here. I'm going to add Mod Podge all over my flameless candle, and this sticks nicely. It does have like a waxy coating, so I guess you could heat it up, whatever, but this is just the quickest way for me to show you how to do it. I'm going to add it down so that it is nice and lined up with that black line on the bottom. That's going to be our border line. And just gently, gently fold and press. You have to be careful. This is one ply. This is a Dollar Tree napkin and it could tear. So you got to be very careful. So now I'm going to go over the edge and I'm just going to brush away from the seam so that I don't pull it back up. And I'm going to go all the way around the candle with the Mod Podge. I'm going to use a lighter to take the edges off the top. Be very careful. This is not for children. My videos are not for children. If you don't want to do it this way, you can just fussy cut it. No problem. Now is the fun part. I'm going to trace the bottles and the bird with the hot glue. We're going to raise this up so we can give some dimension. I'm going to go around the neck of the bottle and just carefully go around the entire thing. Now this is my Sure Bonder glue gun. It is not a fine tip gun, but it is, it's working fine for this project. It gave me fits for a little while, but I guess it was clogged up. If you leave your gun on too long unattended, the glue will melt in there and then it kind of clogs up a little bit, but you can get it out. All right, so we're going to continue around. I want to do the, the head of the skull, the crossbones, the details of the feathers, and then when it's all done, it looks like this. And then you're going to have to set it aside and let it dry. Once it's dry, you can start adding like a drippy wax edge. This is new for me too. I've seen lots of people do it, but I've never done it myself. And I thought it was perfect for this grungy poison candle. I think this is going to look great with the eek sign. So I'm going to continue around and just make a line of glue and let it drip and run down. If your glue is drying too quickly, maybe you don't have a very steady hand, you can use your uh, hair dryer or you can use a, a heat gun like I have here and just turn the candle so nothing warps, but let that glue kind of run down a little bit. And I did um, three layers of this on the top and I just kept adding to it and letting it drip down so it looked like a very old candle that's been used a lot. It's in an old, scary haunted house or beautiful, you know, it's your opinion, whichever way. It might not be scary to you. And we want it to look like it's been there forever. We want it to look like it's been a well-used candle. We want it to look like it's been sitting in the dust and the grossness. And that's where this little shimmer spray comes in handy. Check this out. Look at the automatic age you get with that. Perfecto. I did not know what this stuff was when I picked it up at Goodwill. I had no idea what it was, but I, somebody told me it was for crafting, so I grabbed it and then started playing around with it and realized what a perfect way to age something. 
so yeah i mean if you've ever used this stuff before you can put in the comments where it came from um, what you use it for because i am i'm loving it and i will definitely be putting this back to use next year for halloween as well all right so i'm going to use some of that black and the antiquing wax and just go all over this i really want to get in the spaces where the wax is and where the hot glue is well you know you know what i mean so that it looks really like dust has been in the wax and it's been just sitting up oh yeah yes this thing looks very old would you agree do you think it does i think that just really made so much of a difference Mm hmm the next project is our candelabra forgive me for missing footage but this had a cork on it I took the cork off now I'm gonna use a long bead and a candle holder a singular single little candle holder I'm gonna take this bead and I'm gonna fill it up with glue well partly with glue on both sides then I am going to place it over the stem where the cork was careful careful because glue will come out but look I'm gonna use that glue again recycling my glue so that I can put the other bead down in the candlestick all right once it is dried I'm going to take some black paint and go over the bead so this will now look like part of the candlestick or the candelabra same thing on the bottom we don't want to see that I'm gonna take a little piece of stem add some glue to it and then fit that bead right over the top and it's small enough that it fits right beside the screw with no problem you do have to hold it there until it dries so that the sides of the candle will be balanced and you don't have one higher than the other like it's a scale instead i'm going to dry brush some gold all over it just because that is the theme in this video we have all kinds of gold and i'm going to continue around and just go over it lightly again building up a little more here and there wherever you want to use more accent you can like around the cups where the candles are held you could do that you could color the whole thing gold if you wanted but I love the way this looks these are the emergency two pack of candles from Dollar Tree we're gonna give them a makeover I'm gonna use just a little bit of masking tape and I am gonna go just put this around the light bulb part of both of these candles to protect them because I'm going to spray paint them with some of that same black satin paint once they're dry completely I'm gonna peel off the paint and the little candle part is still nice and clean now the thing with these particular candles of course they do take triple A batteries and they don't come with them so be sure you buy some they have a white light which is not my favorite but I'll show you how to fix that I'm gonna use some of these little little foam tape pieces you can get something similar at Dollar Tree whoops and I'm just gonna use these to stick these down in the little candle cups and they'll stay there nicely I said nicely again my mother informed me that I say nicely a lot so if that bugs anybody I do apologize <laughs> okay so you can see there's white light there if you don't care for the white light you can paint the little light so I'm using some sunflower paint in yellow and I'm just gonna go over this and you can see as I'm painting it it changes the color to a yellowish color you can put as many coats on here as you want to but I don't mind it being streaky because a candle light is streaky anyway and you can't tell when it's lit but you can see the difference now on the light let them dry we're gonna add a little spider decorative piece right on there just to really give it a little something extra and here are the projects of our home sweet spooky home they're all displayed together I think that they look nice together On this channel I do budget friendly DIYs I show you step by step exactly how to do what I am doing so that you will take some inspiration from it and do your own make it your own that's what it's all about I believe in you 
I bring you these projects because I know that you can make them. I'm so happy to have you here. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. If you want to share the video, that's also helpful. And I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Thank you so much for watching. For project number one, we are going to be doing a spider frame. We're going to use some spider web and some creepy cloth, this Dollar Tree sign with the skulls on it, and then this is a thrifted frame. It's got some wire across it. Maybe a little girl had it for bows. I'm not sure. But I thought this would look very pretty with this. So on the edge of this Dollar Tree sign, it's kind of rough. You can kind of see the little MDF or cardboard. So I'm just going to take my little emery board here and just file this down. I found this at Dollar Tree. It's really good for these projects where you got to get around the little bumps and curves. Look, I'm filing his teeth there. And just go all the way around so that you don't see the paper sticking out. I'm going to use my antiquing wax and a baby wipe and just dot some on there and rub it together and we are going to make some shadowing and some dimension on this by going around the edges all the way around and you can make this as wide as you would like if you would prefer to do this with a brush if you like the brush strokes you can do that but i really like to do this i feel like i have a little more control with a wipe in my fingers you want to put the shadows where the eye orbits are around the nose area maybe around the jawline and where the heads sit on top of one another because those are the places that you would naturally see shadows and by doing this you're going to make this dollar tree sign look a lot more expensive now while that is drying we are going to work on this beautiful frame now this is a white frame and it's a bright white and I prefer a more rustic look, a more aged look. And certainly, if this is something that we would find in a haunted home, a haunted house, then we would want it to be more dark. We would look, we would think that it would be maybe aged or gilded or something like that. For me, I am going to just make it look like it is very aged and kind of dusty and dirty, like it would be if it was in a very old home. So I'm just using a dry brushing technique for this, dotting it in that wax, dotting most of it off, and then going back over all of the indentions and details and raised areas on here. Don't worry about if it looks like it's too dark because we're going to be wiping back most of this. What I mean by that is I'm going to be using a dry cloth and wiping off all of the areas on the top. And that's really going to bring more attention to the recessed areas. If you want to send me an email with some of the projects you have done that maybe I've inspired you to do, feel free to send them to me at my email address which is in the description box below. I would love to see it and I would also love at some point to feature some of these projects on my channel so that you get some attention to your work. Continue around all the way till you get as much detail as you want and then here I am taking that dry um, cloth and just wiping it off so the top parts are going to be you see how that looks so much more detailed now I'm gonna give you a closer look I'll lift it up for you and let you see see the difference oh I love this I've had this frame for probably a year and a half waiting to do a project like this so I'm going to use some of this black spider web. Certainly if you prefer to use the white, you can do that. If you like the neon, uh, the purples, the pinks, the whatever you have, just go ahead and use that to suit your taste. And then there's a depression around here. And I thought, okay, well, I wasn't really sure how it would work using hot glue just on the fabric. So I thought if we would use some popsicle sticks, they'll fit right down in that area and it should kind of trap the spider web between the frame and the popsicle stick. And that would hold it together better. So that's just what I did. But you can use whatever te technique that you've used previously and whatever works best for you. You know, I'm learning too. I don't have any um, 
training and doing this type of thing is just self-taught. Everything I do is self-taught. My florals, the painting, everything is just self-taught. So I'm still learning too, just like you are. All right, so now I'm gonna take some of this creepy cloth. Now this is more like a, it's almost like a cheesecloth, but it's called creepy cloth, but it's not like the ones from Dollar Tree. I got it at the thrift store and I really couldn't tell you. However, I feel like whether you use this type or the one with the looser weave, any of that would look good. This is just gonna give it a little more dimension again. And I'm going to, um, you can see I'm trimming it now. But I use the same technique when I put the spider web down. I use just a little bit more of the popsicle stick. You can see the smaller pieces to just glue that one down right on top of it, just sandwich in between. And so now that we've got the back finished and I'm, I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna go ahead and work on how we're gonna attach this sign down to the frame. Luckily, there are lots of little gaps in the frame on the side. So we can just use our pipe cleaners and some hot glue and I'm just using some masking tape and press these into place so that we have something to put through those open areas and attach it to the frame. These little spatulas are great to keep you from burning your fingers because um, the glue gun I'm currently using will take your fingerprints off. Yeah, that's the big boy over there. Now I'm just gonna feed these through this frame and I hope y'all can find something like this. Maybe you have an old mirror that's broken you could get the frame. I feel like this was probably a mirror at one point and somebody else repurposed it and when they were done they took it to the thrift store and so I was able to benefit from it. It's like a plastic material. It's very very lightweight so it didn't cost me very much at all which is always a plus because I am super thrifty. Oh by the way the popsicle stick you could see there on the bottom I do fix that. It came loose but I do fix that no worries. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and put some more spider web on the top of this frame. If you don't wanna do this at this point, you can wait until the last step to do it. But for me, because I know I'm gonna put a bow on there, I feel like it will help hold this in place. And anything I can do to make my project stick together and look good and just, you know and be efficient with it and quick with it we want to get our work done but we don't want to be here all day long and you certainly do not want your projects that you work super hard on to fall apart and the spider web is just kind of weird it's not meant to be a permanent thing you know it's a halloween decoration you use it you throw it away now i'm going to make a bow for it and i'm not going to make a huge tremendous crazy wacky bow so don't be afraid I'm going to use some of that velvet ribbon from Dollar Tree. There's only about three feet on a roll. I'm going to use the spiderweb ribbon from Dollar Tree. And then this is some that I've thrifted. And it's just a small piece. But I'm going to use it and work with it. So I've found when I'm working with scraps of bows that don't have the same lengths, making a funky bow is a really easy way to do it. So this is how you do it. I'm going to have about three or four inches of a loop. You can see I'm folding it over. And I'm going to pinch it about three or four inches down and then place it in the crook between my pointer and my pointer finger and my thumb. I'm going to hold it tightly right there while I continue to fold, pinch, and tuck the next one. Again, if you just have scraps of bows or scraps of ribbons, this is a really easy bow to make that is a nice looking bow. Don't you like the elegance of that black and red and the velvet and the lace? It's so pretty to me. That just, it really looks elegant. And that's what made me think of doing these projects. Something elegant. Something that you might would actually see in a very old historical home that's been left alone for a long time. And maybe it's haunted by a super chic ghost. Okay, so we're going to dovetail our ends. These tails are not all the same length, and I, that's, not a, and that's also not a worry with this type of bow. And you'll see in a moment. Go ahead and start fluffing out after you've got your tails all finished. Fluff out the little loops of the bow, and then start pulling these up, almost like an octopus, as if the loops on top were the head of the octopus, and all of these little tails are going to be the legs. That's kind of the idea. You can lay it down and do this, or you can just do it in your hand, whichever way is easiest for you. Pull them apart, 
and pull them away from each other because you don't want all the same colors together. You want to kind of divide them up and get good color all the way around. So you see some of those tails are a little bit shorter. I like that. And I will be going ahead here and trimming up a little bit more here and there until I get the look that I like. It's always best to have a little bit extra. You know, I think I've mentioned that before with bows, have a little bit extra on there and then if you trim it off, that's okay, but it's difficult to put anything back, right? So if I wouldn't have been so overzealous, I could have put a pipe cleaner in there to attach it to my project. Hindsight, right? Okay, so we're just gonna use a piece of floral wire and thread it through there. Easy. I do this all the time because I always forget to add something to attach it to the projects. I'm just going to twist it around here tightly to my frame and I like it off to the side. Just going to do some more adjusting on my bow. Never leave a bow unfluffed. It's just not fair. It's just not right. Always fluff your bows. It makes a big, big difference. And you know I love y'all. I want you to have beautiful projects that bring you joy and make you proud when you look at it. When you pass by it, you go, I made that. Yes. So this is how she's going to look. Very nice. Not too big. Not overpowering. I'm just moving that around. And I don't even glue that top layer down. I just stretch it around. Okay, another thing. Last minute. I took two big spiders. These came from Dollar Tree. I use my building blocks on the back to give them, because they're concave, so this will give them something to stand up with. And at the end screen, you're going to see that these will be attached onto that frame. See there? Now it's got something to glue to. So stay tuned to the end. Next one is our owl cage. Okay, this is something that I have thrifted. This is an owl that I thrifted, so a bird cage and an owl. I've had this little owl for a while now too. It's time for a makeover, so we're gonna use some flat black paint, spray paint them, and then this is how they look. Gorgeous, very pretty. I love the look of it. I've been hanging on to this project too in my head, and finally for Halloween, we're gonna come together. All right, so using some rich wine, burgundy, rust colors we're going to make a beautiful little home inside of this bird cage or whatever you want to call it i'm going to use some floral foam to put on the bottom it doesn't need to fill the entire cage up because you just don't need that much foam and why waste it if you don't have to use it right grab your cool temp glue which i did not use so it immediately started crackling and melting my foam but if you just quickly press it down and hold it in place it'll pretty much stay for you that's my experience at any at any rate. If you've got a better way of doing it, go right on ahead. So I'm just going to put my glue bottle, um, my paint bottle, in the middle just to hold that space so I know when I'm working my project that there's going to be space there for me to put the owl back in. So it's just a space holder, that's all. If you don't need it, then you don't have to do it. I'm going to start working in an A pattern, right, left, side to side north, south, east, and west. That's what I'm gonna do, starting off with my picks on the bottom. If I would have had more picks, I would have used these instead of using the loose leaves that I have to the side, but you never know what you're gonna have, and if you're gonna run out of something, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you run out of your picks, but you have loose flowers. So you just take old stems from other flowers or other greenery, and you just glue them to the back of a beautiful leaf that you like. It's on wire so it too can be bent and then you just put it in the foam. How easy was that? That was so easy. Now these picks that you see me putting in now are from Target. I got those on 90% clearance a uh, year before last I think. So I've just cut it into pieces because the color is perfect for what I'm looking at. I've got some either eucalyptus or boxwood, whatever this is, that's glittery and black. I've used it in other projects. These were my last two pieces. I'm going to stand those up in the cage for the, the owl so he will have some privacy in there, a little hiding spot. 
these little berry picks came off of some of the other greenery. I just pulled them off and I'm just going to stick those in. They're in a deep purple color. It's just gorgeous. And these beautiful flowers. I don't know what these are. They look like camellias to me, but they are stunning. They're just beautiful. I'm going to add those around here and there. They were thrifted as well, y'all, but I know you can get them at Hobby Lobby because at my walkthrough, I saw them. Now for this one, I am going to pull the center out in the first top few layers because I want this to make a little nest. What I'm doing now is taking a wood carving tool and stabbing down on top of the leaves that I glued on the bottom. I don't know where that clip is, but I glued some down. I made that little slice so that we could put the stem from this right down on the inside. It needs to sit nice and flat because this flower is going to be the base or the nest where the owl is going to sit. So it needs to be flat. I'm going to hold it down with my hand for a while and now you can see it forms like a little nest. Do you ever do something when you're crafting and you're like, that is just, you shock even yourself because you think, wow, that's pretty cool. I love it when a project comes together, y'all. I'm telling you right now, I'm not vain. I'm not egocentrical. I'm not stuck up. But when something works out right, I kind of want to pat myself on the shoulder. And then I can show it to you, right? And then you can do it. Doesn't he look happy in there so far? Okay, so giving him a chance to dry, let that glue dry, I'm going to go ahead and cover up the foam that is in the front with a couple of leaves. Same colors that I already have kind of going on there. And I'm using these colors again because I feel like they're they're elegant, they're jewel tone, they're just really beautiful and dark and mysterious. Oh, I just love it. And then once I close the cage, because the bird is in there and he's happy where he's supposed to be, I'm going to add one flower right into the front with the... Um, where we already had those leaves we just glued down. So that's where that flower went, right into there. It went right through the leaves into the foam. Now I'm gonna turn it from side to side and make sure that it looks fairly symmetrical, nice and even, and that there's an even amount of thickness in the foliage and in the flower so there's no gaps and everything looks pretty and neat. You lift it up and look around and make sure everything's like it should be. And so here I found a little space that needs a little more foliage. So I'm just gonna take another pick, same beautiful colors, and just push that in there. And this is how it will look. I really like this one, y'all. Very pretty. I'd love for you to check out my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. The last and the easiest project is a framed cat. Here's a little thrifted frame that I got. And this is a lantern from Dollar Tree. I'm going to choose which panel I want to use because it has four panels. Two different prints. And I like the cat, so I'm going to cut the cat part out. And then make sure that it, it works. And yes, it is going to fit nicely in that frame. Perfect. I'm going to cut the top off. I'm going to spray that frame in this black. Once it is dry, we will proceed. Check, check, and recheck, right? I'm going to trace on a piece of scrap paper right on the inside of this frame. And then I'm going to cut right to the outside of the line. You can see I leave about a mm, quarter of an inch, give or take, because it does get a little bit bigger as I go around the curve here. And we're going to use this kind of as a template to make sure that I don't cut too much off, but that I have enough to glue down. It'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to place that down and just use a little bit of regular scotch tape transparent tape, whatever you want to call it, and this is going to hold it in place while I cut it so nothing slips. Then I'm going to cut the same distance outside of that line, 
to make sure I have plenty and I don't cut it too short. And I'm just cutting through the plastic part and I'm cutting through the paper part. Because I know exactly where I want the cat to be positioned. And this way, I can get it centered right in the frame. Just like that. Okay. I'm just using my clear Elmer's school glue for this. You could use probably E6000. I don't know um, how it would do on the plastic, but the Elmer's glue works nicely. I did have to wait a good bit for it to dry, but that's okay because, you know, when you're working on a bunch of projects at once, you've got time, you know, leave it alone and move on to something else, right? And this way, you won't be able to see it on that plastic film if it does, you know, if you get a little too much or whatever. You won't be able to see it. I'm gently putting it down, tapping it in place with my fingers, and just slightly kind of pulling it to the side to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Then I'm going to press it down and then let it dry. Once it is dry, you can take some small scissors and just trim off the excess on the back. Y'all, I am so happy with all of the stories I got on my um, Halloween Familiars video. So many people have had black cats in their lives, and I heard so many cat names and about your childhood, and I love that. I hope we can keep doing that. It helps me get to know you, and that's special to me. Because I really do, I really do love and appreciate you guys. I really, really do. So I want this to stand up. And I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree little blocks. You can get this in a pack in the Crafter Square. I just colored them with my Sharpie because, to be honest, I could not find my black furniture repair marker. So this was the next best thing. It was right there, and it does the same thing. Just makes a mess, kind of. I'm going to use hot glue to just attach that to the little parts there. And you won't be able to see it when it stands up. And look how nicely she stands there she is miss uh, okay now here's the candle so i'm going to turn it on and you can see that it flickers it's a little flameless candle and it fits perfectly around that doesn't it it's going to look good together i want to make it look a little richer so i'm going to take some of this bronzy paint and i'm going to be kind of dry brushing this the little paintbrush is from dollar tree and these are good i can't recommend all paint brushes but for me these work really good for this type this technique I just started off by going over the rosebuds and the rose just to kind of see how much coverage I wanted but then I decided to go ahead and just there's little dots on the frame I wanted to go ahead and go around all of those dots and just bring that out just really bring it out I don't want to have completely matte black on this or satin black Got to bring some richness back into it, right? We got all those beautiful colors and tones in the in the frame and in the owl, so we need it here too. And you see how that just highlighted all those high spots? Highlighted that. Looks so nice. And I think she's a cutie. All right, so here's our beautiful owl and the frame. I could have taken some bronze and went over the eyes in the skulls or changed the color to something else, but I like it. It kind of stands out being that it's not exactly the same color, but I don't mind that. And it's Halloween, so we can do the glitter, can't we? You can see how I put the spiders on the frame. Here's our happy owl. I had a couple of scratches on it where I was putting it in the frame, kind of scratching it on the metal, and I just used a paint pen and stuck it through the cracks in the cage and just dotted over, you know, where I had scratched a little paint off. No worries. And then here's our kitty cat, and she's lit up with a flameless candle. I think these projects are definitely spooky elegant. Would you agree? Do you think they are? I think so.
I've said it before and I'll say it again. I believe in you. I know that you are able to do these projects. And I hope, hope that you enjoy these projects and found some inspiration. For the first project, we're gonna do a light up candy bowl. Perfect for trigger treaters. I've got some black spray paint. I don't know what this is, uh, but I got it from the thrift store. And also I have a popcorn bowl, which came from the thrift store. I'm gonna use some polish remover, some acetone to just take this down just a little bit. I can, it's textured just slightly so that it's raised up and I want it to be flat. The idea is not to completely erase it, just to get it cleaned up. And then I took the little felt bottom feet off of there and I'm gonna get all that residue off as well so that my paint is nice and flat. I'm just gonna give it a good cleanup. Then to keep the inside of this orange when we spray paint, I'm gonna cut some paper to go on the inside so that it is protected. I'm just using some extra scrap paper I have from another project, measuring off approximately how much I'm gonna need, making sure that it reaches from the bottom all the way to the top because there are a variety of cutouts and then holes all around the top. And I don't want any spray to get in there and mess up that beautiful bright orange inside because if it's bright on the inside, then it's really gonna glow nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on the inside and then if there's any gaps, you put a little extra piece of paper there and I'm just using some masking tape to hold that in place while I am doing my painting. Just go all the way around until it is nice and secure on the inside. But don't let your tape overlap on the outside because that'll, you know, you won't be able to, um, you'll have like a little skip in your paint and you don't want that to happen. Okay, so these are complete now. They are completely dry. You can see what we have. I used a satin finish, so it's got a little bit of sheen to it or a little shine. Take out the inside and look, it worked perfectly. Everything is nice and bright and orange on the inside and shiny smooth black on the outside. I love this. This is gonna be so nice. And as you heard me say just a moment ago, we're going to use some lights on the inside, so stay tuned for that. Now we need to attach down this, whatever this little canister thing is, to the bowl. This probably came off of some type of a lighting, light up item or something, I think. Okay, so I decided to put it on a little pedestal, and this was thrifted as well, so I'm going to scrape off the candle wax and then spray paint it. And while it is drying, I've traced the line from the top of that um, the black pumpkin stand. We're going to call it a stand because it'll be in the middle. I'm going to use some of my Fix-All adhesive to go around here right toward the inside of that line because I want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of glue gushing out around when we put our little pedestal thing back on. And then I'm going to quickly put down some hot glue. Now I'm using hot very hot glue out of this gun because you need just a little more time to work to get it in place. So I'm going to take this, settle it right back on the line here, press it down, hold it in place for a minute. Then I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to turn it to the side in a minute, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing. Go around the edges and let that spill down so it, it clings to the bottom and the sides. So the pedestal bottom is finished and we're going to assemble it like this. In order to get this to sit down properly, I'm going to use these little wooden blocks, which I should have painted black, but I didn't, hindsight. I'm gonna tell you now, if you do something like this, go ahead and do it black so that it doesn't show up. I'm gonna use a little bit of my Fix-All adhesive, and you can use E6000 or whatever you have, or super glue, whatever you have, and then a little bit of my hot glue and I'm gonna go around on the inside where it is. I'm holding my finger on the top so that it is touching so that this will be flat on the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. Metal often has issues like rejecting the adhesives that we use, but if you use something like Fix-All or E6000, it's gonna hold it longer. But the hot glue just holds it in place until that dries. 
So don't put any weight on this or anything until you've given it a, a good amount of time to dry. I'm going to use four spots because I think that that will be enough to hold it in place. And I'm going to go all the way around putting this down. If you have um, maybe something that is more narrow than this, you're going to want to use a smaller block because the curve is going to push it away from the wall, if that makes sense to you. These were the right size to be flat, so it was perfect. And I believe I got those little blocks at Dollar Tree. I'm almost certain that I did. Now, same process here. We're gonna add some of this Fix All Adhesive or the Dollar Tree Super Glue, whatever you wanna call it. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue here and then quickly flip this over and center it down on that pedestal. Now I'm gonna take my lights. I just have a strand of copper lights here. I'm not even gonna unwind them, but you can do whatever you wanna do. You can use Dollar Tree lights if you would like. I am really not sure where these came from, but I could almost bet that they're from the thrift store because I'm cheap like that. I love to thrift. So there you go. Look how pretty that is. And the orange on the inside really makes that bright and glow. Doesn't that look like a fire in there? Oh, I love it. You could also use uh, white lights in the top if you would like. And you see these are white instead of the yellow color. I'm gonna give you some options here on how you could use this dish. If you just wanted to use it for decoration, you could take some batting or pillow stuffing or some of that spider web or creepy cloth and wind your lights down on the inside of it. Then you can put some more on the top and then in a moment you'll be able to see that you can kind of see through it and it looks really cool. So you could skip the, the lights in the bottom if you wanted. Isn't that cute? It looks like lightning in there. I love it. Or you could use a pillar candle and this is battery operated candle and then put your stuff in all around it. Then you can add some little bones or some little bugs. I've got some little spiders here. Whatever you wanna put down here would be really cute. You could also use some of those little ornaments or you could use it as a candy dish. You don't have to put anything in it. You guys can watch my videos Mondays and Thursdays at five Central Standard Time. Okay, so this is the yard flag sign. I'm gonna use a thrifted yard sign this is really pretty, kind of primitive looking maybe. I've got some paint and of course you'll need a paintbrush and then I have this sign that I have from the thrift store. And then I'm just gonna push the back out. I do make quite a bit of a mess and you have to be careful because sometimes they'll break. So just go gently around and yeah, I have a big mess. I did scrape the words off of there with that little spatula I had. I'm gonna clean up the frame I'm going to paint this white. I'm just using some chalk paint because it dries quickly, but you can use acrylic, whatever you want to use. And you don't have to paint it if you don't want, but it's going to help the, the bright yellow and orange stand out on the pumpkin flag. Then I'm going to take some of this, um, this is stain or wood, well, it's like a color tint. And it comes from um, plaid. And then I'm just gonna use a foam brush and put this on to give it more of a, a dark wood grain type look. With this type of coloring, you can put it on, wait a few minutes and then wipe it off if you would like. Um, but I like the, the stripes and lines, it looks more like real wood. Okay, so see the white under there makes that look brighter and I like that. If you didn't put that on when you put your Mod Podge on, it'd be a little bit darker, but you can do whatever um, you like to do. So I painted the bottom borders because the sign's a little short. I painted those black and then I'm going to trim this off just to make it a little bit easier to work with. It's got about a half an inch left on each side I think. Okay I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and this is just the um, the Mod Podge that is not shiny but you you know again use whatever you like. This is making it my own because we like to make it our own. And then I'm gonna go all the way over, even over the black paint, so everything has the same little finish when we're done. 
and I'm going to place this down and start pulling it into place. Press it with your hands. You can use any type of a little um, squeegee or whatever you have to get these in place. When you get these wet, you know, they're kind of pliable. They're going to kind of, you don't want to get your pattern distorted. So you can go ahead immediately and put on a layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to do this pretty thickly and I'm going to be sure to go over to the sides all the way to the edges. You can see the little white line when you get to the edge Then I'm going to let it dry. Now we can trim off this fabric on the sides. It's nice and crusty and thick like a piece of paper because of the Mod Podge. So I'm going to flip it over, take my rotary cutter, press it down pretty firmly, and I'm just going to go all the way down to the end and pull that right off. The reason I have to press so hard is because there's, you know, there's a seam on the top and the bottom of the flag. So that's why you see the little struggle there. Then where the two meet, I decided that some of this beautiful ribbon from Dollar Tree would be a great way to cover the seam. It is a glittery ribbon, and I'm just going to put it down with a bit of hot glue, just eyeballing it to make sure that it's, you know, pretty even. And then using the little spatula or squeegee thingy, I'm going to press it down to make sure we don't see a lump underneath. It'll help smooth out that glue and make it nice and neat. And then we're going to flip it over and then trim off the extra ribbon. Going to fit it back down into the box frame, press it down. You can use some hot glue to close it back up. And because Trish loves her backs finished, I did this with her in mind. And I finished it off with some crafting paper. And you'll just need to glue it down and then you can give it a nice clean finish with your crafting knife. And this is how it will look. Very nice. Nice big sign. I am having a 17,000 subscriber giveaway and you can win. You can enter for a chance to win anyway. Put pumpkin in the comments and read the directions. Okay, now it's time for the charming candle. This actually, at the last minute I changed my mind and decided not to use lace because I found my scarf before I found the lace. This is a little bit of trim. Here's this beautiful scarf that I thrifted. And here is a little cat medallion that I used on another project that I pulled it off. I'm going to lay this beautiful jar down and I'm going to cut off. I wanted to make sure that I saved that fringe off of there. So I'm cutting above where it has a seam on it so I can put it aside and keep it for something else. It's pretty. Look at that. This kind of looks like a spider web to me. I don't know, it just looked Halloween-y. And it was calling to me more than the black lace that I had, so I decided to go with it. Going with my gut here, y'all. Hope you like it. I'm gonna use some hot glue and protect my fingers and then press this down into there, trying to make sure that my lines are, are pretty neat and I haven't distorted my pattern in any way. Folding it over, trimming a little bit more, and again, I'm trying to trim underneath where the patterns go together so that it doesn't fray. A little more hot glue, and we're gonna lay down a nice seam here. Then you can trim more if you need to at this point. All right, so I'm just gonna stuff that in there while I can flip it over and glue off the bottom. I'm adding this down and going around. Then I'm going to trim off what I don't need that's kind of hanging from the top. I trim it twice because, um, you know, I was in, was having a creative block trying to figure out exactly what it I wanted to do with the top of the jar. But I did finally cut it down a little bit more and decided to just tuck it over on the inside. It would have a pretty decent finished edge if I did it that way with nothing sticking up. So that's what I decided to do. I just went along the inside with a little hot glue and just tucking and kind of rolling my fingers down and pushing it into 
and away from the outside of the jar. And so this is how it looks, almost like a vase. So I decided that I want to use my little trim, my little lace trim here, and go right around where the neck of the jar is. Very easy to do. This is such an easy project. If you have your supplies, you won't have to even pay anything for this. Grab your scraps. You know, I have a bag that I keep next to me that is full of ribbon scraps and little stems and greenery pieces. Grab what you have and work with that. So I'm just going to wrap this around. I don't want to do it too tightly. And then once I get back to the beginning, I'm going to take another layer and go right underneath it. And you could do this the opposite way. But it's easy to do this, this way. And it was a second thought anyhow. Okay, so this is a little piece that came off of a headband. I'm going to put it down first. And then I'm going to put the cat right on top of it. And I called it a cat medallion, but it's actually a sticker, like a, a puffy sticker. But I've used it before and I love it. It's so pretty with the wording in the background. So I'm going to put that down on there and this is how the little jar is going to look. Then I'm going to take my candle and put it on the inside and of course it's flameless. This is how it looks when the lights are dimmed. Do you like this one? I like it. So here's an option if you like the top to be finished off. You can take some ribbon in a coordinating color and cut it off. Then you can just use it to wrap around the top. It's going to wrap around the outside and fold it over toward the inside and you just use a little bit of glue to hold it in place. So to give you an idea of what that would look like, you could do it like this. You could also use like a black ribbon or something like that. Finish it however you like. If you've enjoyed this video so far, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. You can just keep going along. All right, so here are the projects. We've got our pedestal candy dish, the lace candle, and the sign. Thanks for stopping by.